Hi, Paul. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Chris. Welcome to Building Up To It, episode 34 of the LEGO Podcast. And I assure you, we are not farming around for new guest hosts or new regular hosts, but it keeps looking like we change our lineup. Matt is unable to join us tonight. He's got a busy week of work. And uh, Kenny is finally able to join us. Hey. So he's filling in for Matt tonight. He's going to bring something special to the, the cool table here. It's not this one. This one's not very cool. But uh, he'll bring it. And uh, so anyway, you can you can find me here, hanging out with you every Friday, a.k.a. Tuesday. And Paul's here. I am indeed here. And you know who else is here? Kenny's here. I am Kenny's here, too. <laughs> Chris, how how was your week in Lego? Did you get anything cool in the store? Did you uh, do anything cool with Lego today? You know, trade-ins seem to have hit a wall briefly. I'm sure that'll correct itself tomorrow, for all I know. Be another 70 pounds in the hole. But I haven't got anything lately into the store. Um, I've been getting a lot of art. I got a I got a f some frames in the mail, so I finally framed up some things. I know that's a big problem for a lot of people is getting art and then never getting around to framing it. But when Walmart makes frames so cheap, I'm, I'm pretty up to date with my frames. I got the two solo prints from Regal IMAX done by Tom Whalen. I got those two in the mail and framed them up. I framed up a Rogue One IMAX poster that a uh, uh, friend Kevin gave to me. A while ago, I had never framed it because I already have a Rogue One poster at home. So I felt weird having two Rogue One posters. Like, ah, Rogue One. But I did it anyway. I got the Art of Mondo book, which is really awesome. I got more Gundam, of course. And uh, none of those things are Lego. I also got uh, some st oh, stuff I left at the store by accident. Darn. I got, I got some uh, Disney toy box figures because they look kind of cool. But then someone told me it's just... The, uh, what's that thing? Um, Disney Infinity artwork, but fully articulated. Now I like them less because I didn't realize it was just the Disney Infinity aesthetic. Oops. How about you, Paul? Dude, if you like it, you like it. That's cool. No, yeah. no don't worry about it there. <laughs> okay. Um, I did do some Lego things this weekend. Um, this past weekend, that's Chris right over there. Uh, <laughs> Click it already. <laughs> <laughs> this past weekend was uh, Father's Day, and my wife and I went with our daughter to Brick World Chicago. And uh, I'm very excited to uh, to share some pictures that we got from that there and to kind of go over the experience of Brick World for those of you who have not. But this is what we ended up with. Um, kind of the main reason that we go is more for kind of the eye candy to check out the builds and all that kind of stuff. We don't necessarily go to try to get any bulk Lego or to try to get any vintage sets or anything like that. If we do buy anything, we typically buy some custom figures and custom stuff. And that's kind of what we did here, like we did before. Um, I picked up a few custom figures from uh, Citizen Brick, whom we've mentioned on the show many times. And um, I talked to Joe for the first time today. It was real cool. He, of course, knows he knows Chris well enough from all the other shows. And, what did um, he know me by? You asked him what uh, you asked me what name he would know me by. What did he know me by? I first mentioned Chris, and then he didn't know who you were, and then he did. He said, and I asked him, like, do you know him by by Clutch, by Bricks, whatever? Like, Anything is fine. I just know he, he's he's uh, like my hookup up, up in the Philly area, is what he said. <laughs> and, nice. Um, and I and I've as I was trying to get myself introduced, I mentioned that um, I'm 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 on the podcast with him. And he goes, "Oh yeah, I just literally had two people in a row talk to me and told me tell me that I should listen to building up to it." So, nice. thank you guys for 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 trying to spread the word about this show and especially to people like that because we do feature him a lot because we enjoy his work. We're not sponsored by Citizen Brick or anything like that. We just think he does good stuff. So, um, when people like that get get. Uh, have our show brought to their attention it's real cool at least for me um and uh, that means people are liking the show so i like that um as you can see here i've, I've got some some more close-ups coming up here but for, from citizen break specifically um picked up a charlie brown head and body and then uh, we happen to have the legs at home uh, i'm probably going to give him short legs i think it's traditionally how he is there um this is the cameron figure from um the, from ferris bueller 
<laughs> exactly. Um, to be honest, this is a figure that my wife wanted, and she wanted it mainly for the Red Wings jersey. And uh, because she's a Michigander natively, she wanted that. And so the only reason we didn't buy the set is because he's going to get kind of cannibalized just so she can use that shirt. Um, my say wife and I. <laughs> Sorry, say again. Does it say how on the back? Uh, it does, actually. I don't have it here it's actually it's in another room so uh, i can't show you live but it does indeed which is it, it's it's accurate to the show i guess <laughs> um we, my wife and i we dig uh if any of you see my my very first or remember my very first uh kind of shelf life was all about <laughs> christmas sweaters so here are some christmas sweater uh torsos there along with the chicago flag torso right over here and then being that we just had a baby here is a uh, a baby wrapped in the receiving cloth or receiving blanket right over there because you get the this ugly sweater with the two reindeer humping uh, we did not if he has that uh that specific design we did not see that one there Must have sold out uh, he does he did have like six or seven and i didn't notice that but uh, i could have just been looking quickly he was very very busy so good for him for being busy but it was he was very busy and yet still took the time out to talk to me for a while which was real cool so paul i i saw a picture of his setup or actually i saw a picture of the 15 dollar like what do they that's, call it the stash yeah that's oh yeah, sorry go ahead yeah i saw a picture of that from Thursday when it was full. And then when you sent us the picture on Saturday, what was left, I was like, man, Paul, you missed half of it. Oh, I, I, I wasn't planning on getting a, a bunch of those things. We just kind of get the, the little ones. But I I, I, de I put those pictures in kind of the presentation for today just as, so you guys Oops. can all see what he shows and kind of – and just to see how well that, that if you put together a good quality product, it – it, it sells well and people tend to enjoy it. Um, another kind of customizer that was there that we tend to go to on these shows is uh, Eclipse Graphics because they do some cool printed stuff as well. Um, got a Pepsi vending machine because my wife, Love just Pepsi. like Eric and BX, loves Pepsi. So we had to get the Pepsi version. Uh, she, also, <laughs> she loves Fruity Pebbles. So we got their uh, their cereal box there. And she loves her iPhone. So we, of course, have the, uh, the smartphone inbox still right over there. Um, uh -huh. How much are like the little individuals? Like the you don't want to know. <laughs> uh, the Jesus figure here, uh, which was I, I did. I mentioned I didn't plan on getting a Jesus minifigure, but when you see one that looks this good, I'm like I got to pick that up. He was twelve bucks, I believe. Um, and then these are some stained glass tiles that they had printed um, for the set. There uh, was twenty bucks for the set there, so um, not, a little more than we would typically want to spend on just a, basically a window piece, but. They were really, really cool and really well done because um, uh, with light behind it, it really does come out well. Um, it shines pretty well. So I I thought those were pretty cool. And, of course, we got uh, Pickle Brick or Brickle Rick, however you want to call him there. Uh, as a big Rick and Morty fan, I definitely wanted to pick that one up. So this was only $2 for that, even though it only is in quotes because it's a one by 4 brick um, with just some custom uh, printing on it. But, yeah, it, it, two bucks is, is on the cheap end for something that you can get at the show for something that's custom. Um, I think the iPhone, like a buck fifty, something like that. Okay. Uh, so those little things like that are not that ex are not that expensive, relatively speaking, of course. Um, yeah, no, but, I'd be down for stuff like the like the cereal box there, you know, in the in the phone for sure. So I want to say cereal box, maybe three at the most. It was four because we wouldn't spend five dollars for that but yeah. um again it, as a as a novelty kind of um this is just a as a as a memorabilia piece from the show um that that's the kind of stuff we like and it's the kind of stuff that we're willing to pick up so we we, we thought that was pretty cool yeah definitely um but that is it for me lego wise uh this week uh i'll say yeah, yeah. So um, here you go this is by the way this was brick world the the, the theme this this year was seasons and mm -hmm. so um We'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later in the show. Uh, before you leave your screen share, um, what is the graphic for Sizz and Brick there? Is that a postcard or is that a sticker? Is that a bag? Postcard. This was in the Ziploc that they loaded all this stuff into. So it would I, I need it. that. <laughs> <laughs> I need that in my life. All right. I'll look I it love up. everything they do. I'll hook it up. I'll put, I'll put it out there right there. I, I love everything they do. Um, except for like the military stuff, because it's 
It doesn't stand out to me as being any different than any other people who make the military stuff, but I'm and probably they, just not looking close enough. They do a lot of military stuff. It's all very high quality. But um, And the zombie yeah. stuff is like, I don't care. Yeah, I'm, I'm not but, as big a fan. Okay, of I don't love everything they do. <laughs> I love everything they've done that I've bought. <laughs> all righty, that's it for me. How about you, Kenny? Did you uh, do anything interesting with Lego? Um, I let's see. Within the past week or so ish, uh, it is my first time here, so I'm gonna recap a little bit of what I've done as of late. Um, I definitely picked up the hospital. Uh, I was very interested in that. Um, nice. I believe they've only they had like the like a like a forest themed hospital like in somewhat recent past, and then like one other hospital in the past like 15 years or so in city. Uh off the top of your head at all there haven't i mean if you go all the way back there haven't been more than 10 it's probably in in modern ones it's probably closer to five in total but that's like the last uh 35 years or so yeah because i if thought if you go all the way back to the mid 80s or the, even the late 80s they haven't done more than five yeah, I was going to say, like, I think there was an ambulance, like, when, I was, when yeah. I was a kid, like, really into it as a kid. And I was like, all right, I want, I don't want just the ambulance. <laughs> like, they've got to go somewhere. Like, I, I've always had, like, the realist mind, like, where's the ambulance going to go? If, nope. you ever, if you played Lego Island as a kid, they, they had the ambulance and they had a hospital to go with it, but the hospital was never actually a set. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I was really excited about the hospital. Uh, so that's that's a pretty fun set, and I just finished my Avengers Infinity War set, so I've got a a full Infinity Stone Infinity Gauntlet. Nice. Yeah, so it's basically like, hey, I want like these three sets, and I need these three for the stones. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> and to get all the characters, you know. So um, because they're kind of like it, the last one I got was the Black Panther set, and it's just like a half-assed kind of building, you know. But yeah. I. Also, I can also sympathize with the fact that they don't really know all of the details of the movie. So they're like, hey, we need a $40 price point set for, you know, this line that we're going to have. Let's try to make it something that it might work, you know. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, so I just finished that up. And I think that is the most recent stuff I've done with Lego anyway. Nice. That's pretty cool, though. You got some you got some good pieces in there and it it. It's got to feel nice to have a complete infinity call it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah like I, one, one thing is kind of funny. One thing just, you know, over, over my lifetime, I've had a very fortunate childhood in terms of like toys and whatnot. So I'm not complaining whatsoever, but I was always one set from having like a full line of all the sets, like Explorians, I didn't have the spaceship. Uh, Ice Planet 2002, I didn't have their base. Same with Spirius, you know, like I, like I was always missing one, you know? So as an adult, I'm like, I have them all now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm still missing that that one Blacktron one that I'm still missing a Batrax, but uh, that's the only one that I'm missing. And Chris has like eight I've in the got, shop. I've got two of them, and you can buy them, but you don't want to know what the price is. That's why <laughs> I won't buy them. <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, and uh, also just to to tack it on here a little bit, um, I was opening up a lot of boxes recently, so I was uh, taking out like my old castles. Well, it's not even that old, but I was taking out one of the castle sets. Um, so I got the castle all put together, which, and I recently got into the um, the Nexo Knights a little bit, just just a little dabbling. So it's it's kind of neat to put like their their style castle next to like the tr more traditional style castle. That's pretty cool, and I think that we talked about it on the show that that it was it it may have delayed or derailed any any chance of getting a castle line um in the relatively near future but it was kind of a, a nice little nod to those who did like the castle line to kind of still be able to build up some castles and kind of mix it with some space and some fantasy kind of thing in there yeah because you know with with all of the licensed stuff obviously you know star wars is going to sell better than if they do blacktron 3 or something you know what i mean or, or whatever they would would do that's their own for the most part you know and and Chris, you know way more than I do on that on that sort of thing. But so it is nice to be able to have them, you know, like like Chima. I don't think Chima did very well, but they were like trying to, you know, make their own brand, you know, in, in that or something like. Because um, I miss like the, all the different space stuff, you know, like the galaxy is yeah. kind of weak, and um, you know, like they tried, but 
kind of shot themselves in the foot because that one wasn't really all that fun. But anyway. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to the next time that we get the uh, rumor mill going. What with a lot of times Lego will trademark some names for uh, themes or sub themes or something. And there'll be a big rumor mill going for, you know, what are these? What are they going to be? Or, or sometimes it's more obvious what it's going to be. And the rumors are all like the specifics of it. Sometimes it'll be like, oh, that's clearly a castle line, but what kind of castle is it going to be? Yeah. So next time we hear something like that, that'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I can't wait to open up some, some of my other boxes. I know I had a, a, a good amount of one of the uh, last castle lines in the past like eight years or so. So Nice. Tot- tote life. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have the space because I, I, I feel your pain on that one. A lot of mine through the moves have been disassembled and are sitting in Ziploc bags within like paper boxes. <laughs> it's kind of how mine are. I have all my instructions, but like obviously they're well, not obviously, but I I don't have them like super organized. So as I'm like taking stuff out of boxes, I'm like, all right, clearly these parts go to this. Where are they supposed to be? Like I'm totally all for you know building whatever, but you know it was it's like 98 percent done, and I'm like I don't remember which thing goes where. So like I just look at the the uh, instructions real quick, which is a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, because I was uh, I bought something from Chris a while back, a uh, space police, the uh, solar snooper. And he's like, oh, like, I don't have like the original st- instructions, but it, it came with like printed out instructions. I was like, that's cool. Like, as long as it's got instructions, I don't care. And I thought it was going to be like let down. But no, they were like really well done. Like they're all different sizes for like each page, but I didn't care. And it was, <laughs> I, like it was it was completely fine. I was like, all right, cool. I'm completely down with buying anything at this point. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't make those instructions. That is a full-on color printout that someone did of the entire instructions, which is, in my opinion, insane. All the PDFs are free online, and to uh, to kill a whole cartridge of ink like that, um, and then <laughs> no, no, have no. them all be different sizes. And what can you, you do is you print them out at work on a color printer. <laughs> then you're fine. <laughs> hey man, I pay for the ink at work. Yeah, you do because it's your own. Because it, you work at. at at Wink Munster Brunk Show or, or whatever. So that's why. It's, uh, it's Windexer <laughs> Banks Sput is where I'm currently going with. I want in the chat, I need you to leave your best, I don't know how to say Warminster Brick Shop, and I want to play along in this fun game name for the store. And today I said Windexer Banks Sput. And Windexer had a, a little trademark logo right in the middle of it, which I ho- was hoping was going to be superscript, but it's like, nope, same size. Thanks, <laughs> Messenger. Windexter Munster. I'm, I'm yeah, it's uh, Wix, Wixmeister Brickbank. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> um, real quick, I wanted to show a little, uh, little snippet here of um, upcoming artwork from my poster series. Mm-hmm. This. This this one right here is a, is a very very rough roughly rough rough draft of a tauntaun. Um, no, I not so first, but I think it's a horse. Oh, it's... so this is a this is gonna be the October poster because I am that far ahead for once in my life. Nice. And uh, this is the the roughest of drafts of that. So don't don't kid yourself. This is a very competent artist. I <laughs> am honored that this artist was willing to do a poster for me because i saw the art and i got, i thought to myself there's no way <laughs> like I, I i find these really good artists and i think there's i don't i shouldn't even ask but you gotta ask because the worst they can say is no and the best they can say is here's the rough draft <laughs> so if if you guys want to take a guess of what this is what set it's going to be every most of the posters have been a single set reimagined and this one is in fact single set reimagined i cropped it just so because the the set number is usually in the artwork somewhere and it's actually up on this arch archway back here so i i love the look of the the guy there i'm very intrigued i you know what i kind of feel like i know what it is i don't guess you can take a swing at it I don't know what it's called, but I feel like I know exactly what this is. Tell me what it is. 
I don't know what it's called. No, or... well, you know what it is, so just tell me. It's from like the mid '90s, and I just remember there was a glowing ghost, like un- like under a little, uh, like not a cave, but almost a cave where it was like leaning over him. And I don't remember the figure that came with it, but I'm pretty sure it was a guy on a horse. I think you got it, man. Yeah, Dang. <laughs> I think you got it. Uh, someone guessed immediately. That it is the Black Monarch's Ghost is the name of the set. Yes, that's oh. it, that. That is it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's got the doors. Okay. I I misremembered what he was in, but I do remember. Wow, large image, so large. <laughs> Thank you, Bricklink. I want that now. I love so, that. That's that, and he's um, fear not. He's gonna do everything he can to make it read more as the Lego set. Uh, we've already been talking about the options that he has to to bring it home. Uh, because right now it just looks like a picture of a knight and a ghost and a horse. But that's rad. It but is pretty cool. Multiple you. people got it. You know? <laughs> so they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it without... Um, I mean, they all knew that it was supposed to be a Lego set. So yeah. they have that going for them. But multiple people guessed it uh with just that rough draft so it's it's good it's it's better than some of the other ones where i don't people still can't tell what it is but that's it that's the thing they're different every month sometimes they're great sometimes they're not great but they're all great for somebody yes i don't love them all i'm I'm supposed to (laughs) hey you're an honest guy you're not you're not gonna just shell you know and be like yeah they're all the a plus but the thing is, like, even if there are some that you don't like as much or that aren't as good in anyone's estimation, when you get them all lined up, they look awesome as a whole, for sure. I think I talked about it. I forget if it was on this show or where I talked about it. But So I have a portfolio with all of them in there, and I'm trying to get all the instructions and original sets to put on the, the back of the previous page. So it's, like, um, adjacent with uh, the original instructions and the, the poster. And so you can kind of... It's juxtaposed is what I'm going for. And I have them there. I have them framed up on the wall in the store. I have a big 10 foot by eight foot display with them all on it that I put behind me at conventions. And I'm fighting tooth and nail to not put all of them up here at home as well. Cause I have them everywhere. <laughs> and that's a lot of wall. Um, when uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm almost at 25 posters now. Yeah. And don't say there's a lot of wall back here. This is going to be shelves at some point. <laughs> um, Jenny, yo, you're putting together a Lego room. Why don't you tell us about that? I am. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, I moved into my current apartment about six months ago and i immediately got all these shelves up that you can see behind me if you're on the video podcast um but i have a lot of space in the center of my room um so i've been playing with different ideas back and forth on on what i want to do with that space um obviously there's like those cheap like outdoor fold out tables that look like crap but they're inexpensive or i could you know figure out some you know, shelving units that all like line up and have a flat top uh, on on the uh, flat surface on the top with like the shelves underneath, which I'm sort of leaning something to do with that. Um, and that's going to be for uh, my Star Wars sets and my Star Wars situations because they're all really large. The Star Destroyer is huge, and even the X Wings are huge and everything. So uh, that's kind of where I'm where I'm thinking of going with it. Um, I might have more on that side because I have my my desk here, but it's all just <laughs> for as big as Lego is. It's meaning like not very big because you can just build like these you know big buildings and whatnot. It it takes up space fast, um, and that's kind of like what I've run into the issue of because I have a room in my place just for toys, and I'm gonna separate Star Wars from like city stuff and castle stuff because those are the the big three things that i uh gravitate towards uh, in terms of lego so um i'm thinking of doing all my modulars and my city stuff on a similar type of situation um 
in my like living room area. I was trying to keep away, keep toys away from the rest of my place, but it's it's impossible at this point. So <laughs> <laughs> they're bleeding over. Yeah, yeah, you can't help it. At one point, you know, it's like, hey, this is this is the thing I do, so it's okay. Modulars are fairly self-contained. At least that's what I say, because yeah. which is how I can justify having them out in living areas as well. Yeah. <laughs> the modulars stay out there, not necessarily all the X-wings and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, you know, with the shelves for those, you know, it'll work out. You know, I've got like a tie. Every time they've done a tie fighter, I've gotten it pretty much. You know, so it's just like, hey, how many of these do I need in a row? Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, I figured aesthetically it would look pretty cool to, you know, have the modulars and have like all the, all the city stuff. And that might work out well to end up having, um, like if it, you know, if there's like a, a mountain scene or something, so you could have that like on the other side instead of right next to the city or something like that. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to how it'll work out, um, in, in terms of the different themes within like the main city theme or whatnot. So yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I think it'll be it'll be a, a nice way to kind of reappreciate some of the stuff that you have. Is I, I always I think that putting up the display is always a nice way to um, kind of get another appreciation for everything, whether it's transformers, whether it's action figures or Lego sets or whatever. Um, it's just a, a, you look at things a different way when you when you have to go do something like that, and I kind of like doing that. Yeah, I'm right with you. Um, like I said earlier, just taking out a lot of stuff out of boxes. It's it's just neat. It's like wow, I haven't like I haven't seen that in a while. Like I remember getting it. I remember you know messing around with it. And obviously, like I'm I'm a lot more into you know taking pictures and doing things you know like thematically or whatnot than I used to be. Um, so I don't know. I'm just I'm really looking forward to it. I just need to like kind of rip the bandaid off because I I have taken a, a huge step back in like furnishing my place, unfortunately. So. Uh, but yeah. So Kenny, those um those eight and six foot folding, you know, manila plastic tables that you're talking about, they um they clean up pretty well with fitted tablecloths. Mm -hmm. uh, like a the tablecloth that is squared off in the corners and then goes all the way to the floor on the sides. It, yeah. Unless you use risers, then you'll you know need a longer one or something. But you also get the underside of that for storage, so that you won't see because of the tablecloth. So, um, I do that in my store. I have a few of those tables, and I just put the fitted tablecloth on it, and they they look great. Oh, That's yeah. an option. That's and, a good point for sure. Yeah, I've always thought about just the what I could use for the underside, and uh, and for like the Star Wars stuff, I was thinking of, hey, there's a thousand ships you know and you know so like on the top could be like the hoth set you know to try to spread that out a little bit or whatnot and then i can have almost like a hanger underneath or something like that um i've always also debated and and i'd be interested to see what you guys think of just having base plates out that don't really have much on them so like if you were going to have a like a hoth situation would you have a base plate for everything or would you have just be like the table be the be the ground and have all the you know the figures on that or or whatnot or or is a base plate something that you would consider if you get the white tablecloth for the table if you're doing half mm -hmm. then i don't know that you need full base plate coverage because while white base plates exist they're um, not common and they're more yeah. expensive and you probably wouldn't want to go gray and you also probably wouldn't want to go any color with just like white tiles or plates completely covering it. It right. seems unnecessary when you could just use the table. Yeah, cause, uh, back uh, when I got that set, I put uh, probably a whole roll of paper towels across my entire apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I put everything out and I took a bunch of pictures and I was like, I'm going to milk these pictures. And I posted them all at once, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was pretty fun doing that. But what I found was the, was the issue is like trying to have, you know, the different figures like actually stand up. Now, obviously that was, you know, a carpet with a paper towel over it. So I, I started to just have like little pieces of, you know, white, tiles of different sizes and, and having one of them have like one one foot on it like running or something like that so it worked out okay but um just uh, it was for like a more permanent setup I'm, I'm like debating what i want to do there so 
Yeah, I think it's a, I, I like that you got creative with it and kind of did some guerrilla photography with it. And, and I think that's a pretty cool idea and pretty innovative way to do it. But yeah, I, for me, it'd be the same. I would I wouldn't lock it down with the base plates per se. Like you'll see some of the displays that I show from Brickworld. It does look impressive, but from a practicality standpoint, like it for for a, for someone like me that likes to play with these things and kind of move around and do everything i i kind of liked it i would like to be able to just move things around as opposed to kind of locking them all into the base plates of course you can always move them and everything like that but um it, it feels a bit more permanent that way and um like you're just building up the dio and it's going to leave it as a dio and so i guess it depends on what you ultimately hope to do yeah um, if you want to keep it modular and move things around personally i would do just the tablecloth it's totally fine especially if you're on a table um that should make it so that you can get your display going yeah yeah i've definitely uh the other thing that i've ever thought about um and i don't know about you guys is with the like road tile pieces i've seen some people take those pieces and build that into like whatever set they have so if they had like the um you know like any modular like the diner i'm looking at right here they would you know have half of it beyond that and they would you know make it so it's on the street which is a really cool idea but but at the same time like you said at at some point you know the space will come into play or how you're going to want to move it around will be tr you know tricky or whatnot so um, i've never done anything uh with that i've just especially with the road because you have so so little uh actual like studs on it because the road is pretty wide mm -hmm. i almost feel like that one is is good to just put a, like alongside things or not use it all and just have the road be the table or the shelf or whatnot so yeah but, I think Chris could probably speak more to that as far as how what's more common and where it shows up more frequently. But like you see a lot of that kind of stuff in it when you when you build out the city. And if you're if you're traveling with the city and, and kind of displaying it in places publicly, the the road looks great. But again, yeah. if, if if you're just if you're displaying things on, on shelves or whatever, that takes up too much valuable real estate in my opinion because like you said it's mostly road so all you can really do is put a you, you drop a car on there because it's it's a road and then that takes up an entire shelf almost just for that base plate alone kind of a thing so if you have a big table for a big city it can look really cool and kind of complete the look and there's also the argument that you can you can build your road out of just like tile pieces and things like that which a lot of people do that's yeah. way more advanced than i would do with anything there uh like yeah i mean I'm, I'm thinking back to those uh and and i haven't really noticed them as much now because they usually just have the boxes of the sets like on the last page of the instructions or something but when they would used to just have the entire like diorama of you know the whole city and you would see in the background just like the the, the very basic buildings you know that were still built out of brick. i love those buildings those are my favorite <laughs> but like I love this, those dios of you know every set in the series, and then they would have just all the buildings in between, all the road, and then they'd have the you know the pier and all the boat sets and stuff. Like that's in my head, and I I follow countless people on Instagram that I can't like think of their names right now that do stuff like that in their own way, and it, it really is so cool. So hopefully I can um, put some stuff together uh, shortly and start to see where things will end up. I would say if, if you are going to just put them on the shelf, like regular shelf depth shelf, don't worry about the road. Yeah. Because you're, you're not really making a diorama. You're just making a, it's almost as if it's two dimensional. You put yeah. all the modulars next to each other on a shelf. It's a picture. Yeah. If you are going to make a road that goes, that turns, if the road turns and, it's, and therefore it's on a table, then I'd stick with a road. Yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how my uh, living room shapes up, because now I'm thinking of like all the campers, because like every city line has like at least one camper, and I probably <laughs> have half of them that have come out. <laughs> so it's like I need a camping situation. <laughs> <laughs> you can get I, green base plates. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, I need green base plates. I need brown round pieces to make trees. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. But yeah, so I'm uh, like I'm at the very beginning stages. I should be farther along with it for sure, uh, but I kind of have I have an idea what I want to do. And really, the only the only outlier is like the uh, the castle stuff and, and some of the older space, like the Blacktron and whatnot. Because I don't know how I'm going to do that, but those are still some of my favorites. So, but I'm not going to be 
too picky with it, to be honest, either. So I think it'll look cool either way, and we're looking forward to to seeing what you what you put together because it'll be really cool. Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> Paul, what do you uh, what do you think Kenny should do about table situation? It's uh, I, I'm I think of course the table is great. Um, and and probably the ideal way to display a, a Lego city, but I'm just uh, being pragmatic about it. That takes up a lot of space. And if you can if you can afford the real estate to have a dedicated table specifically for that, I'm all for it. I think you should definitely go for it. But if you can't, building up is the way. Building up to it is the way, is the way to to <laughs> maximize space and to to get the best out of display. And, and a shelf is the way to do it. Um, but again, it all, it all depends on how you want to do it and, and, and what your ultimate goal is for the display. But I mean, just like you have enough with all your, your transformers behind you, like it's, you have to kind of space it out the right way. So you have the, the taller bots in the back, so you can still see them when they're covered up by the, the shorter bots up front. Um, it, it's, it's, you need to be cognizant of like shelf space and spacing within the shelf to display your modulars, or if you want to do, if you have enough space to put a camper in front of it or not, or do the do the vehicles get their own shelf at the bottom? Like it, it all depends on how you ultimately want to do it. But I think the the best way to get them out on display is is probably going to be the shelf in this case. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely something you know with with the space that I have left, I want to use the walls and 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 just like the height a little bit more. Obviously, in the middle of this room, there isn't as much as I can use. But um, but yeah, I think I could get like a, a pretty almost like the uh, the L shaped Tetris piece. Yeah, I can have some some sort of situation like that. I think I think it'll be pretty rad in here. I, who knows? I might end up doing the city in here because it might work out better. So uh, you said you're more into the photography of it, right? Um, I've gotten more into it. I do need a new uh, picture taking device at this point, so I haven't really done a whole lot of pictures of anything. But um, just I don't know. I just like setting up scenes and going from there because i'll tell you if you do it on a shelf you're going to wind up with a two-dimensional city and a parking lot for the vehicles as, as, uh, the uh, industry term is parking lot of just the vehicles uh, on the same shelf when yeah. you have all the vehicles on the same shelf they're gonna be aligned in some way and it's a parking lot so if you have any inclination of uh taking photos of, of the lego in the lego with the lego you're gonna want the city layout and yeah, yeah. we talk often about a uh, charm city brick uh and their account on instagram and um his lego city where most if not all of his photos are taken with no background visible outside of lego city so everything within the frame is part of the city and it's lego built you can't see a wall you can't see a lamp you can't see a doorway you just see lego and the only way you're going to get that is on a um a plain surface rather than stacking them up a shelf yeah the shelf i would do for pretty much just star wars now that i think about it yeah and you can build a lot of like you can build flight stands for any one of those ships and yep. That looks fine. The UCS ones usually come with stands, in fact. Yeah. So I'm. I had them on a big shelf at my last place uh, in Indiana, and I was like happy with it because you could still have like the minifigures like all standing around the ship, like you know they're just chilling in the hangar or something like that. But most of the Star Wars is ships, so that works out. And then the 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 flat space has to be for the city. It has to be for the modulars and the. And the vehicles and stuff, yeah, because you uh, like I—that's what I want. So that's you know the, that definitely just helps, like talking about it instead of me just thinking about it. <laughs> saying it's a, loud, yeah, it's a dichotomy in that if you do a space layout, unless you're doing a moon base, using a plain surface for the space layout leads you towards parking lot, <laughs> while going vertical with the space. Uh, space sets on a shelf, you don't necessarily get parking lot. It's it's like the inverse of doing city. Yeah, yeah. No, I see what you mean. So yeah, I, I think uh, I think that just helped me decide right there. So I appreciate. All right. It. Not that you can necessarily afford to put in more shelves because it looks like you're out of wall. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am out of wall, but I do have more wall elsewhere. Ooh. Uh, 
but the I've, ceiling is the ultimate wall. Yeah, I've got the, <laughs> I, I think of um, the Lego Movie, and they were hang the the uh, the Death Star like hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like the uh, that that basement in the Lego Movie, I think is is pretty fucking awesome. Even though it's supposed to be like the bad part, like you shouldn't be doing that. With you shouldn't be locking them all into a cityscape like that. That's like the dream for me is to be able to display yeah. all my sets like that someday. <laughs> I actually wanted the I I there was a bunch of there's a bunch of Tie Fighters in my store, and I don't know. I was just looking at the ceiling today, and I was like. I got to string up some of these TIE fighters. That'd be super cool. You walk into the store and there's just like, like uh, the way geese fly, just that, that worth of TIE fighters all going in the same direction. Nice. It would be cool. I'd just be scared. Like when one falls, I mean, that's a, that's a mess to try to clean up. If one of them sure. is not attached properly to the but ceiling. You're also using the keyword there. If, I'm going to go with none of them are going to fall. Damn straight. None of them are going to fall. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to say when, so you went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I look at things pretty positively. Um, <laughs> Paul, uh, you recently experienced uh, a Lego set up in a slightly larger room. I did, and I think this is, is, is a perfect transition over because I think that um, this may help you with some of your display options or your display um, kind of brewings in your head here. So what I will do, uh, I'll pop in the screen share again. I'm extremely excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> so this weekend was Brick World Chicago, and it is um, one of the, I guess, one of the traveling um set the, the traveling kind of conventions and it is um this was in chicago this weekend over father's day so my wife was actually uh very nice and and decided what well, let's go and we'll bring the baby so we got to go and and check it all out and as i had mentioned earlier this this the kind of theme this year was seasons and um what i'm going to do is just kind of take uh, i took a lot of pictures i'm going to go through them quickly so you can kind of experience what it's like um, if you've never been to um, a, a, a Lego convention. So you'll, you'll be able to see these um, kind of as they go through real quick. Oh, um, and actually, I actually I, I'm going to have to be pulled out real quick, if you guys don't mind. If you can talk for about two minutes, I have to. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, um, I've, I've got, a, I've got a, a baby emergency real quick. <laughs> baby exploded. It exploded everywhere. Almost Paul's quite literally. Be, he's got to so. get the, the, the wet vac is needed right now. <laughs> so I thought uh, after seeing Paul's first picture there, which was um, which was a nice pun, and it was nominated for Best Replica, uh, although I don't know, I forget when the awards are handed out or like placed on the tables. So I don't know if Paul was there before uh, somebody won for that category or any of the categories. So I don't know. That might have won. I don't know. But I think it'd be interesting if multiple people from the show went to the same Lego convention and independently took photos of all their favorite mocks and then you... Um, compared them to see what kind of overlap there would be between between those like I have Matt and Paul and I had all attended Brick World Chicago or any of them that's easily the the closest one for Paul and Philly Brickfest is for me and Matt's got some Canadian things up there who knows and uh, Kenny doesn't have any yeah nothing fun over here <laughs> No, uh, the good news is that a brick fair um, slimmed down from four shows to two shows, and they're adding a traveling show. I'm not sure how many dates it's going to be or how often it's going to be, but their first one is South Carolina, I believe, and that is replacing the Jersey show, which they canceled. Um, so that might go up that way. They've done New England in the past until that one was also canceled. But they could theoretically go back to New England with the traveling one. Uh, maybe after a number of years, it's worth returning instead of doing every year like they were trying to. But that's me talking for a while while Paul's away. How about you, Kenny? No, I, I uh, my mom uh, actually always hits me up when there's some sort of Lego happening like in Boston. And I don't know if it's just the way that it's like marketed or 
the outlet that I end up seeing it on that it l- makes everything look like only kid friendly. And obviously it's, you know, Lego is what age is like three and up or something. So of course they're, they're going to want to get kids involved, but with like all the AFO AFOLs out there, I don't know if they just know a lot more than I do in terms of like these different, you know, conventions or whatnot. So I, that's why I've yet to go to one, but usually it just seems like it's something like small time almost like they're like, Oh, we're at the museum of science and there's a Lego exhibit. And it's like, yeah, that's not really what I want to do. You know, like I have a Lego exhibit right here. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. I was going to ask you if you remember the name of any of the events that, um, that she told that- you about. I don't remember. I mean, this is over the past like 15 years, roughly that, it, you know, whenever something pops up, it's like, oh, hey, like you should go to this. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I should, but I'm working. So I'm not going to, you know, because I know that uh, Kids Fest went to Hartford a number of times and that is marketed towards kids. And that's the one that was officially licensed by Lego um, run by LM&E, which then became Buzz Engine or something. Um, that is probably one that she mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. It's usually because she doesn't say the names either, or she'll send me like a link and I don't pay attention to the name. I just see like, so I don't know. I've never been interested enough, but that was also before I went to like anything at all, you know, like TFCon like five years ago or four years ago was like the first like convention I ever went to. They don't do kids fest anymore, but that would not be one where you would go by yourself and get what you expect to get out of it. Right. You're, I'm not going to say you're not going to enjoy it. Not that you can go to it because I don't do that anymore, but not that you wouldn't enjoy it, but it's not what you're going to be looking for. Yeah. That like, one is like a park your kids here, kids activity for the day. Yeah. Kind of thing. It looks like what, what um, Paul's going to be showing here is like what I would want from. You seem like you want a convention at which AFOLs are displaying their own creations. And I want to be able to buy stuff. Well, you could buy stuff at any of them. You're never going to not have that. I want to buy stuff. I want to buy Fruity Pebbles. And I want to buy Emtron. <laughs> okay, well, those are two things you could only buy from a third-party LEGO convention for lack of a better term, you're not going to find sets from the late 1980s or early 1990s at a Lego sponsored event. You're going to find sets from 2018 and only sets from 2018. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good to know. Are you guys excited? I was just building suspense. There's really nothing going on. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was uh... built. (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't know if I should be disgusted or impressed, but uh, I'm a little bit of both with that one there. <laughs> and, and this baby's ability to to pick the worst time ever to, to try to, to blow out that diaper. Uh, it's always right before I need to go to work. Or, Fun. Uh, or it's in the middle of, of my feature or segment here. But anyway... Nope. So uh, as we'd mentioned before, Brickworld Chicago, uh, the theme this year was seasons. And I'm actually, there are some things that I'm glad to go over here with Chris because he knows a little bit more about general layout. And, and you'll see some things that are that are here in the pictures that I've taken that he can hopefully expand upon because as, a, as just a an off the street attendee, I don't know some of what some of these things are. I can only make assumptions as to what they are. Um, but the goal here is to try to let some of you guys who've never been to a Lego show or at least to, to brick world, see kind of what it's like and to kind of experience a little bit what it's like. Um, I will Morning, say, visually heavy segment ahead. Yeah, that is quite literally what I was going to say is we're going to be going through a lot of pictures right now. So if you are listening, um, I apologize. You might want to jump in on the YouTube uh, episode this time. I will try to do some, some quick explaining so you can get and tell what it is. Um, but again, also off the bat, it's almost impossible to capture the scope and the scale of a lot of this stuff because if you ultimately just take close-up pictures of a set, you don't know how big it is. You don't really know what it is in context of other stuff. But uh, I will do what I can to try to kind of bring that through here uh, and explain my way through things. Now, um, I believe, or at least I'm assuming, that with the theme of seasons that they have this year, um, there are basically that allows for like people to kind of give that interpretation of that theme in, in little vignettes is that is that something is is that accurate at all chris 
Well, so there's going to be a category for uh, for judging for the yearly theme. Okay. And um, so this is just one of the offerings for that. You don't have to build. You don't have to do anything about the theme if you don't want to. Yeah, but and then there's going to be. I'm. Sh- I don't know if you took a lot of pictures for seasons, but uh, it, it's something you could build if you wanted to uh, have an impetus that was outside of your own, or mm-hmm. you, um, you know, wanted to try for another award. Yeah, and I, and I think that then uh, that I was correct in that interpretation, and I uh, to, to kind of I. I showed some seasons pictures and some non seasons. So you can, again, get a grasp of kind of what the, the show itself is about. Um, this one right over here um, was one of the ones that was, I would imagine submitted towards that with the flag and the, the nominated four little things here. But I like that they took the seasons theme into a little bit of a, a different direction. And so they actually made a spice rack and they called it seasonings, but I thought it was actually pretty creative. So they have different um, colored um, Lego pieces that are there to represent different things. So hot dogs are ref- representing the saffron strands and, and things like that. Just thought it was actually pretty creative. Um, don't know if it was going to win because to, to have deviated from the theme as it did, but it's actually a pretty good spice rack, to be honest, and I think it's a pretty cool use of pieces. I like yeah. to shout out uh, wood molding samples. <laughs> yeah, the, the nomination flags are literally a, a pesticide yard flag stuck into a small chunk of uh, uh, like crown molding yeah, Same. it's like if you if you go to Home Depot and you're looking to get some flooring done or to 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 get some, they'll they'll have samples of all of them, and you can literally just just pop them right in, and that's exactly what you would get here. <laughs> Wait a minute, he took the samples and then he took a bunch of people's yard flags. <laughs> On the cheap. <laughs> so here's another option of uh, another interpretation of seasons. These are little vignettes, and this this is the seasons of Minnesota. <laughs> and uh, what I enjoy is that. Three of the seasons in Minnesota are all snow and ice, and then <laughs> there's one that is summer. Um, but it basically is hockey season, fishing season, and then uh, snowshoeing season, and then pool. Um, but uh, again, just it's, it's interesting to see how different you can interpret the same theme in different ways. And this is a little bit more traditional, um, but as you'll see later on, that you, you some people did it all in one set as opposed to the four vignettes that we're seeing here. Um, this is not in that theme, but a very cool classic space um, kind of dio that they have here. Damn, damn, damn with the branding on the corner. It's got the, it's got the Legoland corner stripe branding. It does, as if it was in a oh, box. Is that is that brick built and mounted to the uh, I will backdrop? Oh, so Oop. good. I'll try to zoom in here so you can see. It is no, indeed just... brick built. Oh yeah, of course it's brick built. No, but it is, here. But it, I'm, I'm it always, is tied. The, it looks like if you see it here in the corner, yep. uh, right over there, it is tied. They um, have some tied. challenges here with the depth because they have to have that thing on top of the backdrop, but the backdrop be behind all the, the built Lego. Yeah, as, it, as you can see here. And then it's just, um, they have kind of the monorail that goes, it extends all the way through the build, as we'll see. We're kind of, we'll f- kind of follow it through these pictures. Kenny, uh, is this an instance of uh, this girl's face? I was going to say, this. she is not happy that she's in my picture, it seems. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's like, that's well, a anyway, right now, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh here's, my the, God. here's the middle. And you'll, you'll of course, notice that now the brick built, um, the, the logo right over there. Uh, uh, along with just there's the in the middle here again is the monorail it's now in the middle and it even has a whole coil all the way down through to um the uh, this is the other side of it really um again you get the very large classic ship right over there and then we we kind of delve into some later um not not so much classic space but uh, i have this set right over here I have this future on set right over here. It's still in my, it's in my basement right now. Actually, um, those are still classic space, um, but there was like the ones that looked more like future on. Like there's there's blue classic space, there's gray classic space, and there's white classic space. But it's it's still classic space. And then there's uh, this house, which this dude lives in a house. It's, it's covered in a in in, the, in a dome, uh, and that's just where they live. I like it. Very creative. <laughs> I've seen that giant. Um, Space set number nine twenty eight or some nonsense. I've seen. I, I feel like I've seen that at a show before, but maybe it's just a 
easily replicable thing. Could so th- be. <laughs> this almost discourages me. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. <laughs> It is pretty impressive, and th- yeah. there's plenty of stuff that you'll see in here that could either encourage or discourage in different Kenny, ways through this play that you'll see. Kenny, are you feeling the parking lot right now? But look at that parking lot, man. That's a beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice parking lot. <laughs> and they're like they're, they're using this space while well, they're building up again with with the risers. So it's about the the fourth dimension still. If they were all flat in the ground, it would be definite. There's, but there's still a sense of motion with this, which I think helps with that parking lot to combat that parking lot feeling. If that if that giant one was like on its landing gear, I feel like that would throw everything off just that one ship. But since that one is like elevated, yeah, yeah, I would I would definitely agree with you there. Um, here is one of about seven or eight Bob's Burgers modulars that they that they had in the in the show was a big popular theme. It seemed this year. Um, this one was probably my favorite one just because. Um, it wasn't locked immediately into a city. It was kind of a standalone, which allowed you to kind of take a look at the inside in this case. So he's got the diner set up and everything like that in there. And then uh, above it, it has all the bedrooms and everything like that. And he's even built in the, the alleyway in the back with um, raccoons and then with the dumpster and everything like that. So um, I had to take all these pictures from behind a, uh, <laughs> a railing. Um, but uh, I think it translated pretty well. I think this guy did a good job with it. You hopped the railing, Paul? No, I just reached over. Look at the guy is very happy to have his to, have, to be in the Look picture. <laughs> that guy's yeah. face is good. That's extra. It's extra zero right there, uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's showing off his Lego collection. Um, yet another way to display and, and do things here. This is kind of the, the, a black light display that they had uh, that the, that these people had here, and um, just kind of went in the artwork category, as you can kind of see here in the left is kind of what it was nominated for, and it's just a cool way to interpret and yet a very different way to display that not everyone's going to do this, and I think doing it in this way certainly enhanced what they were going for. It wouldn't work for everything, but it does work for what they're doing here. So there are some little plant vignettes. Um, there's a sunset that they have, kind of uh, a 3D model. So it starts with kind of um, kind of a mosaic in the back that spills out into a 3D model in the front. Very cool overall set to have, or set, a uh, very cool overall piece that they had on display. And the the black light really makes the the orange glow very well in here. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Paul, how many people did you ask them about the instructions for their mocks? <laughs> Only two. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is another one of those themes, uh, the, the the seasonal theme. This is winter to summer that they have over here. And um, I actually liked all that it was just jammed full of details. So they have kind of the, the mountainscape in there going into, um, kind of this is, would be like the cabin, but Underneath here, it looks like it was built directly, partially into the mountain itself, and they're still in construction for some of it with the the keep out sign and the construction workers. It looks like they're actually doing some mining there and and digging out the house. And um, I just like the overall look of this, but yet another way to interpret um, that season's theme all within one very large vignette or one very large set piece here um, that it has different kind of um stages of growth and, and and everything like that and and how it can be seen in different parts of the geography here so i thought it was a pretty cool overall design to it there um this is just another cool just kind of display option so we talked about hanging from the ceiling um this is what they did here this is an airship and nominated for best airship as you can see over there um <laughs> This is a majority, the, 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 the overall display is a majority not Lego in this case. Uh, the, obviously the airship is Lego and the dragons are, but this is all cotton uh, to represent the clouds and a few kind of pieces of the mountains that popping out through um, the clouds here. Um, but again, just, a, just a, a very cool, very striking display and not as Lego heavy. It really decides to focus in this case on the ship itself and just put some context around, um, around the ship uh, with, it, with its display uh, capabilities here. That's one of the things you can pull off when you have a convention that reaches a certain size where there's a certain amount of people come in there to display different mocks is that you can really diversify your uh, award categories. Uh, the smaller show, you could only pull off like 10, 12 categories 
because there's just not going to be enough mocks to fit all of those categories and then confidently judge a, a, a winner for each one. But once you get enough people building enough crazy stuff, you can, you can have 20, 30 categories if you want, because you're going to have enough creations in each, especially if you announce the categories ahead of time and people plan for which ones they want to build for. Like Airship, that's really specific. Exactly. <laughs> I almost feel like the, like they walked by, they saw this, and like, oh, we need a category for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> plus, they did announce beforehand that, you know. Yeah, the only thing that would make this an, air, an obvious airship and not a ship is just because this one flag uh, would be under, in the water. If, <laughs> like the rudder here would be underwater if it was an actual just regular ship. So yeah. it must be an airship. And <laughs> if to you, mention they took that off and they just entered for best ship. <laughs> if you see a category name that has large or small in it, that's because there's they, they broke it into two because there were so many entries. Not that they broke it into two on the spot, but... Uh, from one year to the next, they, they divided it in half so they could have entries for both large and small. Just give out more awards, just more mocks. They deserve awards. <laughs> um, this is just one that I liked. This is part of the uh, the Wisconsin Lug Group here. This is a, uh, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, I just thought it was very... I I've had never really thought about doing something like this in, in Lego. And it's the first time I've seen something like that. But I thought this is a pretty iconic scene in it. And uh, I like what they did. It's pretty cool. That's is nice. the Oompa Loompa like in the Chocolate River? Was he he is in the Chocolate River there. Um, and I don't know if he's swimming through it or if he's trying to, to rescue what's her name uh, or what's his name. I don't remember. Augustus um, Glute. Yeah, good call. That's it. That's absolutely it. I, I don't remember exactly what he does in this scene, the Oompa Loompa. But uh, I like it. I like that he's in the tube with the chocolate. Well done. Um, creator Turner. Um, this guy I just want to spotlight because I think he's there every year. Because I, I, unless there's always a ridiculously large spaceship at every every convention that I go to, um, he just like he just likes to show off his giant spaceship called the Orion, which is a good six seven feet long. And there, there is always there are always giant spaceships at any Lego convention. So <laughs> there are others that I did not photograph because the, it was this giant black spaceship and you couldn't see any of the details in the, in the, in the picture. So that didn't work out for that. But I as you can see here, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. I thought this was baseball one for a second. <laughs> it does. And that was initially what I'm like, it wouldn't be, would it? And then it's not, this is the Orion as he has written there. Unfortunately. It is not the satellite of love. <laughs> But as you can see here, Kenny, this is uh, this is kind of what I guess you could do. Like you, you just cover up any sort of display table or any sort of fold-out table, and it's all covered. Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next thing we have here, this is just kind of a, a Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year celebration. There was a bunch of these. Yeah, it would have been cool if Matt were here because he's doing a Chinatown. But this is specific for the town that they're in. I for, I don't know if I can see it. City. Oh, it's called oh. City. And this is Main Street 2.0. So this is not really anything there. But I do have a quick video that will hopefully play here that you can oh. see. Oh, oh, it's OK. So that, that was a, it. It was so, very short. So this, this is um, supposed to reminisce the Main Street set from 1980. Um, oh, so that, that explains. A, yeah. a blue building and a red building and two road plates and uh, also a crane that is not here right now. How sad. But I, I liked that they decided to kind of go with it. There's, you get the, the rotating car. You have the, the paraders moving around, some lights. Really cool idea. Um, and I, and rags. I, and I dig it. Check out them rags in the back, though. Yeah. <laughs> they got to keep things clean. You gotta, you so gotta, I'll, I'll you tell you this. Uh, a, a few things I noticed about this. So Brick World is pretty famous for having something called World of Lights, which all the other shows have stolen at this point. But... Uh, World of Lights is a two-hour period on Saturday night. I think it's Saturday night, where they turn off all the lights in the convention hall except for emergency lighting. And anyone who has added lights to their mocks turns their lights on, and you can walk the hall as best you can in the dark. Uh, where <laughs> the only the only lights are from within the mocks, and it, oh, that's it's, cool. It's cool. It gives everything a different perspective. Also, shout out to Culver's Butter Burgers back yeah, there on the there back go. left. I got <laughs> one of them last time, and uh, I don't understand what a butter burger is, but uh, I ate it. I ate <laughs> it, and I can already feel the heart disease. 
I love <laughs> the Waldo-ness of like the non-Lego stuff. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> rags. I'm like looking around for it, and I found it. <laughs> rags. <laughs> I didn't realize they had that festival of lights. Otherwise, I, I, there were a lot of lights. I would have taken more pictures of those. But I think you'll see. I've taken a lot of pictures as it I is. I didn't know. I didn't realize that Scott made rags. But you know, I mean, <laughs> here we are. So this is the uh, the the castle from frozen. This is where they actually lived before Elsa had her castle. And this is a gigantic display here um, that I thought was quite striking. Um, and I mean, just, you can it's all the detail on the inside that they have here, all the detail on the mountains, all the detail with just the water. Everything is, is tremendous um, with this one here. So I definitely wanted to, to kind of show this one off. It is very impressive. Um, even just all the little flags, they, they went to all, all the, uh, just to make sure that they were all different color flags. They weren't all the same color flags. I, I like those little details like that. Yeah. Could, shout out to Stave Architecture. Could you go back one to the first picture there? Sure. Yeah. Uh, wh how is the water? Are those just like loose, clear pieces? Oh, yeah. They oh, are yeah. indeed like hundreds of them. Yeah. You yeah. Dump, you dump them in and then you figure it out later. <laughs> so they have the uh, the blue base plate under, underneath there, and then they, I assume, put all of their 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 big sets in there, and then they just dump them in and kind of push them off of the black tablecloth. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really cool. I was I was I wanted to see the edge. I didn't know if it was like built up along the edge so they didn't fall off, but like either way, it's that's killer. That's Not really in cool. this one, but you will see that in some of the later ones here. Um, cool. And then when, this is probably my favorite use of a brick separator right over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shim. <laughs> exactly. Um, here are some other things that you can get. So very large, that kind of large cityscape that we had talked about, Kenny, that you could also do. And you have some road base plates here and things like that. And obviously, it's a good way to, to kind of put all of your modulars together in the way that they are intended. And you can have kind of the all of your vehicles surrounding it. For me, I've got a bunch of Speed Champions cars that I would probably have in there. Or you can certainly have all of your... Yeah, you can have all of your uh, your um, your campers and stuff like that rolling around in the city as well. Yeah, this is what I'm leaning more towards. Obviously, these are all like MOCs, but um, this is definitely what I'm leaning towards here. Yeah, so what, is I, that, what is that completely whited out building? It's got the this ice one over there. The yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a building made of ice because they're all they're all bundled up here as well. And this is like covered in snow. And because it does have the ice queen, I'm wondering if that was intended to be an ice building that she made or something like that. Um, also interesting, there's uh, the doctor with the TARDIS right over there on top of that one there. So little things like that are will tend to pop up throughout all these kind of cityscapes. That's, that's a convention trick in that you put something that doesn't make sense at all but is identifiable by kids and then the only thing you'll hear all weekend long is look there's spider-man look it's spider-man spider-man <laughs> and uh, you know the rest of your mock can go right to hell because spider-man's on the roof <laughs> yeah. yeah so this is just just like that here is a, a cow farm with inside a tauntaun as you can see there and then here is the bat signal right over there and That'll someone having a glass of wine, it looks like, right over there. Um, you go right there. <laughs> and we also have, again, another good use of brick separators right over here, uh, bracing up that, that wall here, and what seems to be like the Battle of Scarif or something like that. <laughs> it's right over there. <laughs> uh, here is uh, for T2RX6 um, and the uh, a, a fully brick-built Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Uh, I have this one specifically featured because there was one very large – Stay Puft Marshmallow Man maxi figure, I guess you could put, would call it. That was just completely yeah. 3D, 3D printed. This one is at least built. So good on them for building theirs out. Somebody had a 3D printed one there? Yeah, it was about this size, but looked exactly like the, the minifigure oh, version. Exactly. So that's why he, that didn't get featured. <laughs> anyway, that, that Stay Puft right there is based on a, a set um, from the early 2000s that was just a plain old minifigure. Uh, that was that size built that way. This one's just modded out to have the um, whatever you call that thing he's wearing on his shoulders and around his neck and also the hat and the belly. The rest of it is the hands are a little bit different too, but the rest of it is basically um, a set. Not nice. to belittle it, but uh, try again. Not 3D <laughs> printed though. <laughs> exactly. It's better than the 3D printing. If I, if I built something, I'll, I'll, I mean, so if, if, this is actually probably the perfect time to, to discuss this. If I was going to 
submit something i would not have anything that is part of a real set unless it was something silly like the doctor who thing like on the top of like a building like that's kind of fun you know but like this is just the the ghostbusters thing you bring up a very good point that i was planning on bringing up a little bit later uh, i <laughs> would agree with you but there's different ways to kind of show the creativity with it and so i guess in this case this is that set amongst a larger city and then you'll see some later where there are some very obvious star wars sets that it's literally just those sets, but what they created was kind of the 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 dial around it. And so it's just it, whether you like it or not, it's just another way that you can display at a show like this. Yeah, I guess I guess I am totally discounting the building behind him and the buildings to the left there because I'm just like, <laughs> why would you just be like, look, I spent three hundred dollars on the Ghostbusters set. What do you? No, think? I I absolutely agree with you on that. that. Not only that, but they also also sixty on the Ecto one. Don't forget that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> You know, if, if I had like a big dio of like all MOC stuff and then I just had the Ecto one on there, cool, you know. But yeah. if like I maybe it's just you know, just the way that the photo is because it, it doesn't see like everything else on this exact table or whatnot. But I'm just like, well, here's a nice one here to kind of go along with it. This is further down and this, this it's a very large display. Here's a huge dark tower, so they well do done. have other stuff. Um, very well done. But yeah, so this one is pretty badass because um, the, the Stark Tower set is probably like this, about not even as big as this one row house here. <laughs> I tiny. don't know that I've seen one that that good before. That is very well done. Awesome. Lots of glass that they have in here, lots, lots of windows, which I think really helps make it. So it's uh, it's it's really cool. And then there is the smaller version of the Quinjet. I think this is the smaller one up on top there. So there's a real piece, but again, more to enhance the huge mock that they put together. Yeah, see that that personally and yep. you know, their yep, own. I agree with you. This I yep. like how that's done. That's fine. Yeah. And this is actually kind of a cool one, if you can see here. There's kind of a, looks like a, just a, a Western kind of thing. Like That's this is like Fort Legorito as a, as yeah. a modular, which Where's I think Matt? is real cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> His favorite set turned into modular, which I think is a really I, cool know, touch. I, I loved that episode when you guys were talking about it because I always wanted the... the uh, <laughs> Fort Legorito. Legorito. I was like, oh man, this is like the grail. And I never, I never got any of them, but... <laughs> well, this, if you ever do, if you get two, you can build that one and you can turn it into a house as well. There it is. They've done it. The cactus <laughs> person, saloon. the cactus person's out front backwards. So it's just a cactus. <laughs> My dreams have been fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> And here you go. Here's some Mtron for you. This is the Mtron Dragonfly that somebody had built. This is one of the only Mtron sets that were there at all. But at least to, to go along with uh, with your Mtron jam, this is I, I thought I would make sure that this was included for you, and we would show you this one. That's some fun. good techniques there. I don't think um, I don't think I've ever seen the uh, the, the air brake. Uh, flap wing thing used as a windscreen, so that's nice. Yeah, that's really cool. Very sleek. Yeah, I like this set. It was, or I like this mock. It was a good design. Nice. Good for that guy. Oh. That's why I changed it to design. <laughs> uh, this was a pretty impressive one. Uh, a large kind of church scape for St. Michael the Archangel Cathedral. Um, and one of the things that I liked about this is one that upon closer look, it, it kind of perplexed me a little. And it's the uh, the stained Flying glass. Flying buttresses. That they, oh. <laughs> that's the stained glass effect that they had in here. Um, because looking close, I, I don't know exactly how it was done if it's not glued in, to be honest. It is a clear 16 by 16 base plate behind there that everything is placed on studs ah, up. Ah, there you go. And the whole thing is slid in on its side. Ah, there you go. Perfect. And now we know. Good call. I'm here to ruin all your dreams. No, I didn't. I, I'm glad that it wasn't glued. So I just couldn't figure it out. So I'm glad that it, that, that it was a, is a real technique to it. Good for them. And uh, I wish that these were. It, it could also. <laughs> but, and, just, uh, just no, I thought that's what you were going to say when you zoomed in. <laughs> I, it could also be a series of. Um, uh, one by two clear plates that are just completely incredibly weaved together, so it makes a solid piece. But that would take a couple layers. Pretty, it, it would take a few layers to get that thing into a solid chunk. I'm I'm not certain that it's a 16 by 16 base plate because it doesn't. I don't know that there's enough space inside of that part of the building to to fit that whole base plate. So it might just be severely layered behind there, or 
if you um, if you backed it with enough depth of trans clear, you could put an opaque color behind that to hold it all together, and you wouldn't see that color through that depth. I guess we'll never know, <laughs> but either way, I I'm guess glad. we've overthought it. <laughs> Likely, stop a lot. And just again, more of more of that. In case we couldn't figure it out, I put in another picture just in case. But we figured it out. Um, this is kind of something that I liked, um, <laughs> mostly because I like this, which I believe is just the the body of a dino without the head turned upside down and added eyes to it. I think that's awesome. <laughs> it looks like a, a, a hilarious little creature. Can that you go back over to the, the card on the left? The RBM7 Heavyweight by Ty, Micah, and Stephanie. Or Ty, Micah, Stephanie. I'm not sure if that's three people or one person. Well, we'll never know. This is similar to the Chubby Bots uh, design that was kind of the alternate build of the Water Strider mech. Just, that just, is, just saying. That is, that is nothing like Chubby Bots. <laughs> I just said it was similar. I didn't say it was as good as Chubby Bots. They're both robots. I see that now. <laughs> And this I liked. I don't. I didn't. I don't have a lot of the bionicle stuff featured here, but I like the kind of evolution that they had here. I just kind of liked the uh, the the idea behind this, and kind of making it a little bit more badass as they go along. Man, I don't do not remember that third one. The third one can can go away. <laughs> and, and it's gone. Here is the pen log. I thought I'd take a picture because this is uh, this is all to scale. I, I assume that uh, Warminster Brick Shop is right over here somewhere. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if the building is still in there somewhere, there is uh, me spray painting my logo on the side of one of the buildings. <laughs> my sick thing. But uh, Penlog was supported by two entire members at this uh, Brick World, which is down by one from last year in which I also went. Yeah, so this is this is part one in, oh, where's Chris this year? I don't know. He just couldn't come, I guess. Uh, so that that that's what I had here. <laughs> but it's a very sprawling uh, kind of rail yard. Very impressive in, in person. Uh, this is one shout out to, uh, say, Adam Rossman, who loves his Back to the Future. This is Doc's Garage, um, created by Tim Picorni. Um, it does have the, uh, the Brickheads. Uh, Doc and Marty in the back, which kind of throws off scale, but it is still pretty impressive to have uh, not the not the Lego Ideas DeLorean, but the but their own creation DeLorean and uh, the other pieces in here as well. So this is the um, this is the city the the kind of small scale version of the city that they have in here. Um, I like all the little details that they put in. So yeah, that's great. I like the uh, the so a few things I like here. I really like the scale <laughs> at DeLorean. I like the. Um, Magneto helmet in the yep. back. Yep. <laughs> I like all the clocks. That's a good touch there, too. A, a nice attention to detail. So, yeah, I like this one a lot. Good for them. Uh, they also had, like, a light-up um, kind of flux capacitator on the side, but it's something that we've seen, or I have at least seen in multiple conventions, so I didn't feature that one here. Um, this is the first of the mosaics that they showed, uh, or that I saw, and it's very impressive. It's 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 gigantic and a really really well done piece. Whether or not you like the uh, the Jared Leto Jared Leto Joker, um, this is something that I think this is this is shout out to Pinkerton, who I think is the only person that I know for sure loves this Joker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is a very impressive um, uh, just kind of mosaic of Jared Leto Jared Leto's Joker um, with the the, ta the mouth tattoo on the hand covering his face. It's pretty striking. I. I don't understand why I can see the seams between the base plates. It, um, my guess is that it was, it has to been on purpose, right? I don't really get it either. Unless the background is supposed to be like a patchwork. It could be. I don't know if this is designed based off of a very specific image, um, as opposed to just, just the Joker and the rest of it is just background. I'm not sure. Um, but clearly it was done intentionally. And I suppose it was maybe, each person did their own tile, right? So this is to show that this is a collaborative effort, perhaps. Maybe that's why they did it. Yeah. I'm not really sure. No, I, I think it's supposed to. It's intentional. The background is broken up like that. Maybe it just gives it more of a Lego feel. Or maybe it's to show how fractured his mind is. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm, I'm not going to go with that one, but yeah. <laughs> um, here's some more mosaics. Here's a German Shepherd. Shout out to Adam Rustin and his dog. Um, here's a cat. Shout out to Dust, who loves cats, as do I. Meow. <laughs> um, this is the Ignacio Dog Park. Again, this is part of the seasons, as you can see. Uh, we're again back to that. So this is; these are all 
in order. I'm going kind of in order as I'm going across the, the convention hall or the convention floor. So they're all interspersed and mixed in together. So <laughs> the, the yellow, the yellow and pink flowers are still on the sprue, just kind of splayed across those <laughs> flowering trees. That's great. <laughs> they totally are. Um, I, and yeah, you're right. I, I like all the different kind of techniques of making different trees that they've had. Uh, so they have it here where they're where they're building up, and then here where they're bu they're they're built out, and um, here they're using the the kind of stems or the flowers. A lot of different kind of foliage techniques, which I like, and certainly with all the different colors and different quadrants up here, you can certainly evoke the different seasons that they had. So that was a good job. It's very busy, but that's kind of one of the things that I like about this. You were able to pack it all into one. It's almost like a time lapse photograph if you were to go around. So I kind of think it's a cool, it's a cool way of displaying that. Um, this is one just because I'm a I'm an Excel nerd and I like graphs. This is uh this is math for you presented in a 3D manner with a bunch of trans studs, which I thought was really cool looking. <laughs> That really is crazy when you look at it and realize that's what it's made of. Yeah, exactly. And this is, and it's accurate. At least the ones that I know, I don't know if these are all right, but the ones that I recognize, so Z equals X, this is definitely right. And here, um, this one, kind of the, 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 what is it? The algebra of this one is also accurate. So good for them for getting super nerdy. I don't know if they'll win anything because I don't know if enough people will appreciate it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> This one I thought was pretty dope too, to kind of build in the opposite direction. Here's a Super Saiyan Goku um, for uh, this one's for Dust, who loves Dragon Ball Z uh, and doesn't fall asleep when they talk about Dragon Ball Z at all. That's um, that's done. This the whole section you're in right now is done by the guy behind it. Uh, this goes by uh, number one Draft Brick, nice who's a big uh, Lego builder and cosplayer. Nice. I didn't know it was a cosplayer. Um, I, he was on the phone, as you can see here. And as I walked by him, I just gave him a quick thumbs up. I love your design. And he gave me a thumbs up back. Um, this is his Thanos, or Thanos, if it's a, I guess it would be Thanos because this is the movie design. I thought and, it was a Fan Thanson. <laughs> Fan Thanson, good call. Um, Are they still saying that? Because that's that's how far I am in ETR right now. Yeah, no, they, they said it yesterday. They All did. Right. I try to bring it back whenever possible because I think it's hilarious. Fan <laughs> dancing. Exactly. Um, I did it. After hearing Brink say it like a hundred times, I did it too. <laughs> are, are these gold bricks like? Uh, what set did that come from? Um, they're probably custom. Uh, do you think so? Like, cause I've never. They're they're, they're like shiny, chrome, almost chromey. There's uh, companies that'll do that. That'll chrome parts. Um. I don't think they're all. I mean, they're, it's probably all Lego underneath, but they they had them coated. Cool. Yeah. That, 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 or or was, they just painted it. I don't know. Maybe they painted. Could it. be. But either way, I don't. I didn't recognize that specific color or shade. I suppose. But I think it was a. It's a pretty fun design that he did, and I like that he does. He has this kind of style and theme between the Goku and between this, and I, and I think it's a good job. Good job, number one draft brick. Um, here's another one, uh, kind of a, an interesting different display inside like a, a jewelry display case for each of the seasons. And they have winter, fall, spring, summer, all that, um, all on different shelves. So again, a, just, to, just to show a different way that you can display the same theme. I thought it was pretty cool, all kind of on the same tree, um, kind of all pieced through that specific thing. So it's out to uh, Greg from Mercy, who loves pop still, shockingly. Um, but this is a very large... Um, Funko Pop, uh, Pennywise, um, including the box and, and everything. So I thought it was pretty creatively done. And here, this is just uh, the whether I'm not preaching to anybody by any means, but this is kind of a cool little idea they did with through kind of the use of that layering that Chris had just talked about, how you can kind of, depending on how deep the layers go, you can have something either show or not show. Um, there are these kind of, kind of tech spec um, kind of glasses here that if you use them and look at the build here, you can see through it. And you can see in this case, he has a message that he has shown um, underneath the the outer layer that you, can be achieved just by the way that you do the different kind of um, the different color layering that you can do with the trans. And if you have just kind of the, the red um, the red screen in there, you can see in this case he says the way through the way to life is through the cross. And he's got a, a lid I of. I feel like I want to walk around the rest of the show with that lens, though. <laughs> <laughs> and see what else you can see. Yeah, would be, would, would be interesting. Now, now go see. back to the previous ones. Now that we've seen the okay, so it's like 
kind of visible. It's it's like the yeah. the three D glasses where one's red, one's blue, and yep, that, that's shout exactly. Out to it. Explorians. <laughs> it's not quite as noticeable in person. My camera kind of with the way that the lighting was in order to get it to kind of see it this way, I had to change the lighting settings. So you can see it more this in, in this shot. Um, but, but yes, you can, you can still see through it. Um, without way to go. That guy looks like he's all out of business cards too. <laughs> he was, he was all set to like preach. So <laughs> and you go even to though the Midwest, I, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Even though I'm religious, like I like I didn't need to hear it at my Lego convention, so I just kept walking. This is a shout out to Cube Dudes. Uh, cube Dudes, and these are some Cube Dudes that they had developed. I I, I like that he that this this creator here, Caleb, he didn't discriminate between uh, between like between Marvel or DC. He has both, so he's got his DC superheroes on the right, Marvel superheroes on the left. Um, so good job, I like that, and I I just like the even the, the vignettes in the background are also pretty cool. So is that um, that's Black Panther? I'm guessing all the way on the left. It is indeed Black Panther. It, it could also maybe be Venom, but because I of thought the that at first, except for for the the claws there, and then uh, the um, necklace is what tipped yeah, me off. And the necklace, and then we have Iron Man, Falcon, Captain America, Superman, Batman. Uh, I don't know who that is. That is Bad Girl from the Lego Batman movie. Oh, it is Bad Girl, <laughs> and then the Flash. Oh, and Green Lantern. Sorry, Green Lantern, my favorite DC superhero. I forgot about him. I, I was about to say nobody cares about him, but then <laughs> <laughs> it's true, no one does. Even though he is still my favorite, uh, <laughs> and this is what I was alluding to before here, uh, Kenny. So these are two, these are two solo uh, Lego sets. So I don't remember what they're called, but these are the speeder bike chase on Corellia. But what they did here, they built everything around it. Um, so that's another way that you can display with uh, using purchase sets, but it, it, it makes it a little bit more interesting when you have the other stuff in there as well. I, Wait, do did, I don't... Did the uh, the biker cop crash and explode? Yeah. There, there was an explosion. It didn't look like this, but uh, there was an explosion there. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that he exploded. Because he was chasing after them, but it, but it was like, boom, boom. I yeah. did get that land speeder, but after it was in, in the uh, movie for five minutes, I was like, eh. I, would I love how all the, all the sets were in the first Moloch. 10 minutes. Yeah. I like the Moloch figure. I think My I'll, man, Malok. I will, I'll, I'll probably pick that one up. I did not pick that up at the show. I didn't even think about that. I should have. Why? Um, you can pay more for it? Exactly. Uh, this is kind of a double-sided um, uh, kind of one. Oh. Yeah, well, almost, but it's, it's, it's more, since you can't really move it, it's not really lenticular in that way. But from the left, rabbit season. From no, the right, duck season. You move yourself. <laughs> Agreed. You don't. It doesn't move. You move. It's lenticular. And then here's yet another Bob's Burgers mock right over there. Uh, as I said, there's about seven of them. That but I thought this is a good one. Oh, duck season, rabbit season. That's awesome. It's classic, and I and I and I dig it. Good for them. I like that. This is the first time I've seen the the lenticular um, kind of uh, mosaics uh, like this. So, so, so I like it. <laughs> Um, this is a shout out. I just thought it was cute. I don't know what they are. I'm sure there's something to this, but uh, I like all the little creatures. I thought they were cute. Um, this just looks like uh, I saw pictures of some of these guys. This is just little creatures. They're all cute. Um, it's you know exploring the different part selection available for the different colors, and there's at least one for every um, major color here, and then they use the plethora of little mixel eyes that have been on the pick-a-brick wall for forever. <laughs> they sure have. <laughs> um, here's one that I liked, Crash Bandicoot. Um, nom nominated for Best Creature, also on LEGO Ideas. So if any of you are big Crash Bandicoot fans and LEGO fans as well and would like to see something like this perhaps made, um, feel free to search LEGO Ideas for the Crash Bandicoot sets because it could be an official LEGO set, as this guy says right over here. That is really well done. It is really well done. I like the I like the shoes even like the shoes and the the shoelaces. Cool, looks good. I like it. That's great. Aku Aku. Is that <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> the mask guy. Yeah, I don't remember his name, but even that is pretty cool too. And the um, little apple thing. Yeah. And here's just an orchid uh, for those of you who like flowers. This is a pretty That's impressive. Cool. It's it's simple, clean, but very well done. This is exactly what an orchid looks like. Good for them. Here's one I also liked. Uh, I like the kind of the dichotomy of, of the design, how there's the – it's very sci-fi to have kind of the monolith in the middle of the desert 
and I liked the 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 technique for the piping, which isn't necessarily technique technique. It's, I believe they're just like tiles thrown like slid in there. But well, if it was to do if the it work, was to do the work around it. If it was technique technique, it'd be pronounced technic, but that's okay. <laughs> But I, I, the, the amount of work that take to, to make sure that you leave the channel all the way through takes some, some good foresight. So good for them on I, that one. I hate to ask, but is it from something? I don't know if it is, to be honest. I just thought it looked cool. I, I hate. I really hate to ask that because it, it, it belittles the mock if, if it's original creation. Desert, which here, it, it is just desert monolith. Oh, now he built that? Never mind. Yeah, he's he's got the talent. Oh, cool. Then there you go. And also, this is best small building. This is that small or large that Chris was talking about earlier. Did you notice the um, plethora of tan skeletons at the bottom of it? I did, which I thought was very cool. Uh, I didn't know they made tan skeletons, to be honest. So th if you zoom back in, tan skeletons are from one of the Ninjago uh, spinner sets. It's like skeleton bowling, and all the bowling pins are skeletons, and they're all tan. And those are <laughs> crazy bricks from Guy, Guy Himber. For those the, are crazy the, brick skulls. skulls. Yeah. yeah, good call. Um, the other one, next one that I liked here, this is just, I thought it was cool. I've never seen the clear pieces used like this. I like Bubble this boat. It's a pretty cool idea. And, uh, and, uh, I liked the technique with here. Uh, I've, I've yeah. never... You can't go wrong with, uh, Nanon. Good job, Nanon. Um, this is another, a whole nother segment of, of kind of the conventions. This is the, the, come on, you got it. I'm just, I'm, I'm suddenly applying the, um, the G you got it. You got it. GBC. I can't think of what it is now. Great ball contraption. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> it's it's late, <laughs> but um, this actually spanned about thirty or forty tables. I only have a small section of it, and uh, just just to kind of show, it literally is just getting balls from one one end to the other, and this is actually the end of it, I believe. Um, There's no end. It's a loop. It is. It is indeed a loop. But you, you, you'll see when we kind of get through it. There's kind of what is most obviously like the starting area where there's where the balls are kind of loaded in, um, and the, and that's kind of we well, see. This is clearly where all the balls are kind of loaded, and then they they will start to feed down into the rest of it. But just okay. to kind of again a, a spotlight of and yet another facet of Lego conventions uh, is the the great ball contraption. There's so so what's going on there is that. Um, it's not necessarily an end slash beginning at, at, at that part. There is a uh, user controlled portion of it. So it is a remote control bulldozer that kids can come up and take a turn controlling it. And basically yeah. you push some of the balls into the receiver for the beginning of the loop again. So it, it's just a different way of transferring from one to the next. Um, so you see people there from the other side with their child fingers are uh, <laughs> using the the bulldozer, which is right by the the, the, the guy's uh, hands there, and they push him into a hopper that feeds the number one unit after it. So the idea of the GBC is you um, you start low and you get the ball higher, and it drops into it drops out at a high point. Uh, and then you put it next to somebody else's. So every one of these is made by a different person. Nice. And uh, it it transfers the ball from low to high, and then the next person does the same thing. It's just a very cool way to kind of bring the community together. This is probably my favorite one right over here. Um, that, that that blue and red spiral. Right yeah, yeah, this looks uh, really cool. I like cool. the I like the uh, the the forks cool that are too. picking them up. Yeah, that one is cool. It's just a uh, it's a very cool little part of it that I'm glad I don't. If 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 I were to get into this part of it of the fandom, I would probably this would probably take up a lot of my time. <laughs> um, here we go, best small building. This is uh, just uh, some some of the cool little pieces here. I'm a big fan of Lego architecture, so these types of things really stuck out to me. And I like that. And plus, College of DuPage is literally two blocks away from my house, so uh, I know this building. So I thought it was pretty cool. And here we like pandas and uh, and cows. So these are pandas and cows. <laughs> and here again, Veggie Tales. Uh, again, there's, there's some slight religious undertones <laughs> in some of the things in here, but uh, these are from Veggie Tales. Now, this is this is all part of 
um, who's going to ultimately be my spotlight this week. Um, this is part of a group called Innova Lug, and um, they, they they had a whole they had a whole section of tables and a whole kind of display that they put together amongst all of them. And what I like about all of their designs is they're not just built from the ground up. Everything um, kind of is extended kind of to the underside of, of what would normally be the build. So here you can kind of see um, there's kind of in this dragon's nest here, there's some, there's some parts that go underneath it. So it has to be up on a stand. You'll see this as a theme through all of their pieces, um, but it works. It, it ends up being a very interesting technique and very creative way to build that they've done that I dig quite a bit. Um, like here's another one here. I like that this one particularly. Um, there's it's building in in multiple directions, so this is kind of off to the side. Definitely, there's the build underneath here, um, and then of course the more traditional stuff. Like like you can say it would be the, the ground level would be right over here, but then all this other stuff is kind of in addition to that to to kind of enhance the build. And I really like the way that they did that. Um, here is another part that they do, kind of like what Chris had mentioned, that they, there's oftentimes things throughout the um, throughout their cityscape or whatever. Sometimes you have little scavenger hunts, and this is kind of a way to increase interaction and to get more people, especially kids, to to check out what, what all the stuff that you built and to bring people into your builds is to get them to actively look for, oh, there's a there's a man carrying a barrel somewhere. Where is that guy? Or there's 14 ships. I only saw that there were 10. Let me try to find the other ones. So it's just a way to kind of further interact with the people that are there and to get them to kind of get you some more visibility um, for your actual, um, your mocks themselves. You know, it's kind of funny is I've, I've done that at my house before. <laughs> <laughs> like no joke where I like set up a whole situation and I had a list just like that. And I had like woman giving birth and like she was like on the <laughs> She was like on the roof of like the Grand Emporium with like I popped her like legs off and put like a baby in the middle of her legs. <laughs> it was like, it was a big long list of all just like the weird things. So that's just really funny because that's something I would do. Just not <laughs> it, but. but here's where you can see how this is this is basically the conglomeration of all of their sets together here. And none of them are flat on the ground. Every one of them is raised. And every one of them has something that would extend to what would be the ground or up past the ground level. And I like that a lot. It's something that I don't see a lot um, or I haven't seen a lot. And this is the only they're the only group that really did that at this show. Um, so I thought it was pretty innovative and pretty cool. Um, kind of, again, more of that that kind of stuff where the, it, it, the, the, the rock here extends underneath it, which kind of just adds more to the story of, of the, the build itself. And here's a little waterfall kind of pouring off there, um, which is kind of what I was alluding to when you had asked about that, that frozen castle um, and kind of the, the edges of it where to see if it was being built to be falling off. This is kind of where you have all of the edges built as well and to have it all everything all included on purpose. So I thought it was pretty cool. And now I'm going to Beth Youth Creation. Good on this guy. Good for you, buddy. I'm pretty sure that that's him behind it, just sitting there um, on his phone because he's tired of everything. <laughs> Simply named John. <laughs> I'm gonna get the card. Now, Chris, uh, do you know which Black Falcon uh, Fortress? There you go. <laughs> As we have spotlighted on this show before, the only reason this one is being spotlighted here is because someone had actually created this kind of more modernized version of the same set and actually put it up on Lego Ideas because he he wants to bring back the Lego Castle theme. Um, put it so, up on Lego Ideas because he's interested in getting declined. <laughs> exactly. But I, 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 wanna, I figured I'd give him the spotlight. If anybody does uh, does like this and, and would, would appreciate something like this, it might be nice to show your, your support of furthering the castle line uh, as be well. Great. So there you go. Castles like that? Search for Black Falcon's Fortress on Lego Ideas. You can see all the little details. Like this, uh, everything about this is is as accurate as you can get with a castle. Um, and it's it's really interesting and really cool to see it just com in comparison to the 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 old school versus the the more contemporary. What you can do with Lego now, and if you aren't if you aren't strapped to specific like budgetary constraints and things like that, it's it's amazing yeah, what you can do. Going on back there. Yeah. <laughs> It was interesting. I didn't know. I didn't know what they were doing. So it's nice to know now. Finally, <laughs> it's a parse drift. It's got to be, or it's um, 
splitting up lug bulk. I got a, a typo or um, a grammatical error with that um, that signage for black for the ideas one. I mean, shouldn't the apostrophe be after the S? It's like the, they're the black falcons. It's their fortress. There's no, no it's one, not. It's not a specific no, person. <laughs> there's no one black. Well, maybe. I don't know. There might be one knight who is is the black falcon. <laughs> We'll have to go deeper into the lore. Oh, There's Bionicle, fun. Yeah, but the, it's more about the mosaics in this case again, with the kind of double sided from the other angle. You can you can, you can kind of see the other, see what it looks like on the other side. I don't know if these are the same character or not, but again, that that whole the whole lenticularness of it. Flip it <laughs> is once there. more. Um, so it might what? be more, more more modernized versions of it, maybe or something. I don't know. Well, can't tell if that's the newer ones. Yeah, so this is they get the mask and then they get like armor or something. Oh, that could be it. I thought that's kind of like what it looked like. So I'm pretty sure this is Andrew from Bionalug. And um <clears throat> I think I spotlighted a bunch or some of this in um, my thing from Philly Brickfest because he was there. Uh Bionalug. Good call. There it is. Freaking Chris, man. <laughs> I just like this guy because his hair is made out of bananas, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, oh, this your, is, your, your hair is made out of bananas. I, I don't have very many bananas anymore, clearly. This is another thing that you can do. Um, it's just a huge war battlescape, and it's all minifigures, all in a row, just because technically it's accurate. But it's just another way to display. It's um, There's not as much building associated with this, but, but um, just the sheer volume makes it very impressive. Um, so some, some people will like it, some people will not. If this was clone troopers, would you say the same thing? I would. It just, again, it's impressive just in the volume of it. It's not a great, a great build. It wouldn't win any awards just because it's just a lot of things lined up. But it still looks cool, and it still looks visually striking. And I'll give it credit <laughs> for that. That's all. I, uh, I now remember a uh, spotlight that I would like to give next week. Cool. Um, and here you go. This is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is, I think, I, I, I kind of the next two that I've kind of spotlighted are kind of trying to make lame things cool. So this, this is, uh, was this Galador, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of a mech, Gal a Galador mech, and the next one is a Duplo mech. Uh, I just thought that was kind of a cool way to. Wow, to that's really cool. good. I like those. The other one's scary. Yeah, it is scary. <laughs> and can shout go, out to uh, more Pepsi. Can you go back to the uh, the Galador one? Um, I'm trying to figure out, are those Scala shoes on top of its feet? They look like little, um, the doll shoes. They sure maybe, do. Maybe they're just feet all together off of something. And here's crazy baby arms is what that looks like. <laughs> Unless, no, Galador was too big of a scale to use shoes that small. All right, go back to the Duplo one. I gotta see it again. It is the maniacal dupe lord and the mighty duplos? I dig these a lot. They're great. Awesome. I love the use of duplo on Lego because that's what this is. The mm -hmm. core is Lego. Yeah. Good job, creative. Good job, Kevin Huxold. Um, here again, I like architecture stuff, so this is just some Frank Lloyd Wright stuff that they had done of actual buildings, uh, which I like. Um, just a, 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 what, What's ironic is that these are arguably very imp impressive builds, but in comparison to all the other stuff, all the bustle of activity was on everything else because these are just buildings in the middle of nowhere with no context given. So uh, not as, not as well-received by all the kids running around. This one here is the Mackinac Bridge. Again, my wife being a Michigander, she loved this one, so we had to get a good picture of this one here. If you go back one and zoom in on the award on the left. I think this is an old award. 2017. Yeah, but I realize it's an old award, but this thing won last year. So... Uh, I'm not saying it's impressive I'm not, enough. No, no, I agree. I'm, I'm just saying I'm amongst the... the, the public fan that were there. These were pretty empty table. Like they were pretty empty. Not, not a lot of people around it because all the kids that are there aren't going to appreciate this. They're not going to appreciate yeah, how, how impressive the build is. Exactly. <laughs> Idiots. Where's Spider-Man? Idiots. <laughs> I like the, um, uh, the, the mini car on that, on that bridge. 
Okay. Yeah, it's uh, they, they kind of have this like with the tower bridge set. It's similar in in style to those, and I so think it works it, well. Does it go up in the middle? Um, it does, and I don't remember the reasoning for it. There is reasoning for it. It is. Uh, I think it's part of it is for wind resistance and, and that kind of stuff. But I don't remember exactly what it is. There's a whole um, there's a whole episode of like some show on it that I that I did watch. And I don't remember any of it. <laughs> Um, here, I just wanted to, to see if it, if you knew anything about this set. It looks pretty cool. It seems like it was an actual set because it's been autographed by someone, but I have no idea what this is. Mm. Any idea, Chris? It's set number 99 out of 99, or it's just a very creative mm. and very detailed mock. <laughs> hmm. Trying to think of what that photo might be of. Can't say for sure, and if you don't know, then it will leave us something to to research in the future. I don't know, but the first thing I would do if I was you and still there taking a picture is look at the studs, make sure it's Lego. Uh, well, when you when you see who actually uh, made this one, I think you will see that it is indeed Lego. Um, because this is this is oh this is I should this is the London spy or the shard by the way I just like to go all clear but these are all pieces done by someone that we have spotlighted in the past this is the uh, this is the London Eye this is London basically um, there this is in Rocco is it it is indeed this is oh, R- I got it I win every time his R J Boutelier I'm not sure how you pronounce Boutelier. it. But he is a, he's a Chicago dude, so um, I see him frequently at these shows. But now that we've actually spotlighted him on the show in the past, I figured I would show this is who he is. Young dude doing some good, some good builds. Um, these are like the Chicago specific ones um, that, I, that, I, that I'm always drawn to, being that I'm from Chicago. And I know these buildings. Um, but either way, very impressive work. He's got an impressive quaff of hair as well. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen him dressed down. <laughs> Is he normally in a suit or something? I feel like he was normally dressier than that. I think he's now just gotten more comfortable because he's because I think when he was younger, younger, I think he felt the need to do it to to feel to get res- to to get that respect of he's not just some kid building Lego. He's doing some cool stuff. So that's that's him. This is indeed Rocco. Good call. Um, this is apparently. Um, based on his Instagram here, a guy who builds stuff, this may have won um, Best Creature. This here is just nominated for, but he said he won um, Best Creature. It's a very impressive dragon. Um, but I don't know what's up with these wings. And if and it's cool that you can just have this as your wings and still win, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> but the rest of it is pretty badass, I got to say. Lots of segments. It looks very natural. And I like the fire. Um, additionally, shout out to uh, the Carter Industries um, spinner set that you uh, have. Blade it's like, Runner. <laughs> here's the, the Blade Runner unicorn. It's a very simple piece, but very well done. Can you go back to the Jag- the Dagron? Yeah. You can zoom in on them wings, them wingling dragons. Also, look at that kid in the back with the blue hat. Like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kid shops at Tilly's. Look that, at him. <laughs> that girl's stare at her paper. <laughs> she's doing Sudoku so hard right now. All right, so I think she's in cross stitch. Those, oh, Midwest. Oh, it's all tires on his tail. That's cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah. If there's oh, what any the heck is it's those that big drill thing. Yeah, I'm trying it's to think cool. what those tires. wings could be made out of. Like, and instinctively, you first think it's just like, um, like tripod legs like for for a for a camera mount or something but is it like a maybe it's like a sail this is like a sail piece or something no, like that it's, it's a, too a, big the only thing i can think of to make it <clears throat> legit would be if it's like a uh like one of those canvas cinch bags the promotional cinch bag that maybe lego gave out oh, canvas bags at one point and you cut them up and you resell them and you put them like that because there's there's a lot of ways to bend the rules. Like you can you can use Lego store bags for <laughs> stuff. Just the bag, the plastic from the bag. You can use that for pulling things off. All right. So Ed, we still got some more pictures. So I'm gonna try to crank through them. Um, let's see. Shout out to some uh, Star Wars brickheads. 
uh, to expand the universe here. Lots of them here. The uh, the Cantina Band, some Hoth scenes, um, Admiral Akbar, uh, prequel guys, all that kind of stuff here. Yeah. Grievous, I just particularly like Grievous right over there. I feel like Ula needs to hit the gym. <laughs> <laughs> So does BB-8, technically, as well, right over there. He looks pretty round. Well, uh -huh. he's a robot. <laughs> exactly, and he's supposed to be round. Um, this one, I believe, was got a nomination for Best like the Mosaic, not the Trench Run, um, likely because this is not technically, quote-unquote, accurate. But I thought overall, again, a pretty visually striking piece in general. Um, just some kind of – this is some some Battletech mechs, I believe, or at least in that style that look like that. Um and I like mechs, so of course I took a picture of it. And here again, I like the architecture stuff. So I took another picture of a big architecture set. Yeah, Coca-Cola in the background. This is a cool uh, kind of men in black uh, display that they had. Um, it was very hard to keep it in focus, so it <laughs> a few flickers. But it's really cool. Different scenes from the different movies throughout, uh, which I thought were cool. It's pronounced Mob Stub now. No, not Mob Stub. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Smug Mug. It's, it's Smug Mug now. It's not Flicker. Oh, that's right. And then uh, even up top, there's stuff there. There's stuff there, which of course I didn't really capture much in the in the video. But it was very cool. Men in Black. Um, that is cool scene. Uh, this I thought. Now we're at uh, we're at Citizen Brick now. I just thought this was hilarious. Yeah. Have a creep head uh, <laughs> who looks like Chester the Molester. And this is shout out to Clutch. Oh. And, um, yeah, trade man. man. So right, this so is how empty this has turned out to this be. This thing Saturday. was completely full. And there's still another day uh, of the show after this as well. The far top left is where the Portillo's guys were. Yeah. To the left of that uh, thing from that show no one watches. <laughs> that nun thing from that show that no one's ever seen. The Look at, I don't think there's a single the one missing show. there. <laughs> They're all there still. Yep. Lots of those. Lots of zombie stuff. And uh, I don't, I don't, these, these are a theme, but I don't know what this, I don't, I don't know what this is with these faces here. Uh, <laughs> it's and then awesome the, is what it is. The tiny faces crack me up. Yes. Here, here are the other Ferris Bueller guys. And then here's some more of the military guys and some zombie the, guys. The yeah. low faces. <laughs> yeah. Those uh, bonus faces are I would have bought every one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and then here are some more. Um, there you go. Uh, more military stuff that he's got. I love Citizen Brick. More you zombie stuff. I would have bought the zombie black flag shirt for sure. And then there's even uh, supercomputers, which are cool as well. I'm afraid I cannot allow that, Paul. <laughs> oh, there's Dr. Evil in the middle. All the way on the left of this shot. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I didn't notice that. I did that. not notice him before. Crap! I probably would have picked that up if there if there was an Austin Powers one. I put I would have picked up the set. And then here's some. They have some pre-built kits that you can buy at certain places. I didn't buy any of these, but just the, this to show that you can. Some some vendors have these types of things. This is for a sonic screwdriver here, and here's a little xenomorph thing. It wasn't as impressive in person when it was all built out, uh, so I did not pick that one up. There's another one coming out soon. Another reason why I didn't pick that one up. <laughs> Shout out to Snake Fliskin here from Eclipse Graphics. Um, which was a pretty impressive one. Um, they do some some cool little things like that at this at this specific uh, customizer group. And here's some Halo figures for those of you who like Halo as well. There's Victor. Is that him in the middle? That's Victor. I don't yeah. actually know what Victor looks like. So cool. That's Victor. Nice. Um, here's an Enterprise for those who like Star Trek. Shout out again to Adam Russman who loves Star Trek. Um, this is a cool just. Um, Rexzilla is what this one's called. It's kind of a big Mecha Godzilla type thing. Uh, I like the destroyed building. I like the technique on his scales and the back and his spines. And I like all of the uh, the Toy Story aliens. And so, Buzz Lightyear couldn't handle it. <laughs> you see that Rex from Toy Story is piloting it? I did not. That's that's, that's, that's why it's awesome. Rexzilla. Dude, freaking eyes over here. Ah, that's awesome. I, I had I, I wish I had seen that because I love that. This speaking of babies and creepy babies, uh, these Hell are babies yeah. in mech suits, which I think is awesome. Is this from a vendor? The, yeah, no, this is this is this is a, a build. Oh, okay. This display. <laughs> uh, and this is just a wrestling ring. Uh, yep. And then of <laughs> course I didn't. Uh, I don't have that picture here, but this is the changing area where they all get suited up. 
as well. There's the there's the, the scale of baby <laughs> in the middle. Yes, he's horrific. That thing. Also, I <laughs> love the battle helmet. I have a couple of them. The little helmet uh, that some of them are wearing is from uh, the Heroica games because the the baby head is the same size roughly as the um. The little micro figures, micro figs from the games. So they mm-hmm. we put one of the helmets on there. This is just super creative. I'd never seen this before. Call so them battle babies. Babies in mech suits is just hilarious to me. <laughs> That's amazing. And here again to show scale. Here's this child, and here's the Sears Tower. So this is the size of at least two of these children. And so those are the kinds of things that you also have at shows like this um, amongst the big cityscapes and things like that. That kid's height. Yeah. <laughs> so this I thought was interesting. This is uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but it looks like it says all just just plain base plates. But it's all these are all specifically built. And of course, I can't. You can't really see. But these are the round um, two by two. Oh. So that's, this is how. I this thought is, that's where you were going with this. And you confirmed it. That's amazing. Yeah, this I is, thought this was so super this, impressive. This is double scale, or. Yeah, double scale. Hmm. So what what looks like just a, a regular stud is actually a two. A, is it a two by two? Two by uh, two. Yeah. Yeah, a two by two tile, round tile. So that's how big this actually is. So this is um, I believe this is uh, art on the block by EJ Bocan from Abby Dabbles. Yep. Or or Abby Bocan. Abby made that one herself. Then all right. <laughs> again, the the dude knows what he's talking about here. This uh, this what is this called dollar. again? Like the first thing you said with for those shapes, what is that? Uh, Mondrian. M- Mondrian is the artist. So uh, this is if you saw in the Bricks and the Dollar, or Bricks and the Dollar, the Toys That Made Us episode. Like this was kind of the impetus for the colors, um, and so this is kind of a throwback to that. It's a yeah, it's a Dutch artist that um, that did artwork. Was it Dutch or was it Danish? No, it's they're, not- they're in Denmark. Either I way, did, did European artist who. Uh, Supposedly, they were all like the streets of New York City, or at least some of them were. Not that they were specific intersections, but it was like based on the the grid of New York City, um, and then only used these like primary colors. But yeah. now that I've seen this, I totally I'll, want to make this. <laughs> also, I don't really know anything about Mondrian, so uh, don't shout fact check to, me on any of that. Shout out to uh, the toys that made us. Uh, here's an Iron Man. Um, but what I like is that it's not just your typical bricks it actually has some kind of greebling to it to add texture and i kind of like that it's not all the same type of piece that's cool. so i thought that was cool that's what separates the uh the men from the boys there with the mosaics and there's there's free software that'll spit out a two-dimensional mosaic for you this like you is can, uh, this is next level yeah this is pretty impressive and here's a uh, course for mercury also impressive I'm hoping you got the little one in the corner of it, too. I wish. I, I, so I, that little one down there in the corner is called A Little Silhouetto of a Man. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> you can kind of see it in here a little bit better. <laughs> that's, that is, that's brilliant. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that even more now. <laughs> Man, Paul, I need to, I need to just... It? Put footnotes on all your photos. <laughs> Indeed, you certainly can. Uh, this is one. This is, this is an older one. This is oh yeah, 2016. Aquaman versus. And I remember seeing this when I went to, to Brick World two years ago. Aquaman and a bunch of vignettes. So this is versus Earth. the pebble. Versus who? Versus oh, the okay. Apple, versus one, right. versus biology. Versus left. So that's the left shark. And versus swimming and things like that. Versus sushi. Creative, very, very enjoyable. I thought it was pretty funny. And the only reason why I have this one on here is because they all, oops, I went the wrong way. They have kind of updated it for here. This is the, these are the newer ones. So um, that they did versus SeaWorld uh, versus the public versus uh, <laughs> Mama something versus Jason, Jason Momoa is probably what this one is here. This oh, is no. Aquaman versus Aquaman. Puns. Aquaman versus two, the sequel. <laughs> And oh, shit. Aqu- Look at the Exxon one. Exxon. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the eyes. <laughs> and then versus the Arctic, he's frozen. He cold. Oh, that's good. Um, 
And then here, shout out to Matt. This is kind of a would be your your UCS Clayface from the movie because he loved all the the the, the movie pieces, um, which I thought was pretty cool. This is big Clayface. Uh, here, kind of uh, a larger scale vignette, I suppose, on, on a base plate. This is um, this is uh, the throne room here, which I thought was pretty cool. Even though, ironically, not all um, these are not all what's it called? Because the set's not out yet. The Praetorian guards. The Praetorian guards. Yeah, they're they're, they're actually just uh, imperial guards. But who's, still, who's the guy on the right with the scarf? I assume that's, that's him. <laughs> that, that is uh, Jay from the Lego Ninjago movie. <laughs> 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 I also like uh, if you see Snoke, he's uh, cut in half. Which okay. I, I dig that. If you see Snoke, <laughs> this is a uh, kind of again by the same creator. It looks like three base plates in this case. Um, for uh, this is Scarif, which I thought was pretty cool. That is the most yeah. different ATACT I've ever seen. <laughs> but what is cool, and I wish I was, I took a better picture, but I like how <laughs> there's Baywatch. There, there is a uh, the the octopus guy from the Ninjago movie in there. As well. Turtle, yeah, I, I like that they did that and threw those little those little fun I, things in there. I don't know how to fully express my opinions on the, that ATACT. It so looks, we're just gonna we're just gonna have to move on. It looks like a corgi. Um, this is a uh, fully mocked out um, Sanctum Sanctum Centorum um, from Doctor Strange. This is what it would be like if it were done. To scale the movie, I suppose. So it was and, pretty impressive. Uh, in before you, Kenny, this is what roads look like when you make them out of pieces and not base plates. Yeah, that's definitely cool. Are those uh, flat? Okay, yeah, they're flat pieces, not on their sides. Um, this is might probably, be probably this is this is on its side. At least part of these it. These are is. these are here. It looks the, like the striping is on its sides, but that's not to say that the rest of it isn't studs up with tiles on top, and then there's channels where the other stuff's dropped in sideways. Right. Shout out to uh, Hawkeye on a motorcycle. Um, then, then there's uh, Agent Coulson, and then Speed Champion sets. Hey, look, it's the uh, the WRX. Uh, I mean, Ford Focus. <laughs> Here's some more uh, mech suits, because I love mech suits. And this is a whole mech, like, the uh, diorama, basically, which is pretty yeah. cool. These guys put this on every year, and they always talk at me for, like, two hours about this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Shout okay. out to Mountain Dew in the corner there, and lots of Mountain Dew in the inside because how you can't be a nerd without being powered by Mountain Dew. And then here, nominated for best mecha. So there's as it, as it should be. If if there's a mecha um, category, these should certainly be nominated for. I don't know if they won, but they should certainly be nominated. Here's some Battlestar Galactica stuff, which I thought was really cool because I'm a big fan. I would not have been able to identify this. Um, yeah. All but, of uh, it is. All of it is Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, these are all different ships and different parts of Battlestar Galactica. So like this I is see, the, here's the, the Galactica, and then the, there's a here's a, here's a Viper. And then yeah, the Raptor, I recognize the Viper. Raptor, all that kind of stuff. This is the this is the uh, the Cylon Starship, and things like that. So they're all part of it in vastly different scales. Um, <clears throat> but I thought they were pretty cool, and this is what I'm hoping someday. Uh, Maybe you can make Carter make something like this. Uh, that's like that's like, like UCS that. scale too. That's that's. that's it's pretty impressive. Awesome. And then there's even kind of a this is like the hangar for all of them. And here's a stealth raptor, which is from the the rebooted series. Very cool. I, I like this a lot. But again, yeah, I was a fan of this. Gotta see a raider. No, oh, good call. Yeah, this is just really cool. I like that. Even though they have like X-wing pilots and stuff like that, I think it's just a really cool uh, overall diorama. So good on them for that one. This is uh, back to throw back to Chima or call back to Chima that you had mentioned earlier because I believe this is all this is all a Chima thing. Um, very very impressive. Again, wow. this is, is one's impressive by the sheer number and the volume of everything, but it is it's a humongous set in general, and just about everything is all trans pieces. So the it, it must have been very tedious to build, but it looks awesome. And uh, there, there are light bricks in it that you, I, that you can you can kind of see here. These are all light pieces um, through the bottom, like the base of the. Here you go. Here you go. You can see some there. Do you have a card for this? I do not, unfortunately. Uh, what, but I will. What is his name? He's gonna I, kill me. I will. Um, I will see if I can actually. Um, I think this might be the guy from Denlug. 
in Denver that has uh, the Hope Castle, which is all made out of clear, like plates and bricks, and has lights and sounds inside of it. This could be him, or this could be something similar. Also, is this on the floor? No, it's on a table. Oh, the perspective is so crazy. Uh, I thought that maybe you could see it in the next one, but no, you can't there. But it was pretty impressive, or very impressive. Good on this guy, if it is indeed you from Den Lug. Um, no, this is this is a Lego name? idea set. This is a Lego idea set that if you want, you can support. It's a, tr- it's a Swiss Family Robinson treehouse. Yeah, that it's guy a, was at a uh, at Philly Brickfest. I just figured I'd spotlight it in case you're interested. It does look very nice in person. It will take up a lot of real estate. Um, but if it's something that you that you like, please support it on Lego Ideas. Um, we've got a lot of cool little building techniques with it. Uh, here's Baymax. So that was awesome because I oh, also yeah. like Baymax. I, I thought it was Tim Stone um, with the Swiss Family Robinson. But it is Tim Stone, which is often uh, typoed as Time Stone. <laughs> and Philly Brickfest for no good reason. Um, he does some amazing work, and I hope I don't know if he brought his mostly orange space colony thing. I don't know if that's coming up soon, but that was a real treat. He Brickfest. did. I don't know if I took if I put the picture in this because it didn't translate well because it was all orange like studs all over the orange tablecloth, so it just didn't look good in person. Or it looked great in person, it didn't translate well on camera. Uh, so I don't think I included that one. I'm gonna take some points away here for that. Uh... Oh, never mind. <laughs> there it is. Hey, there it is. I did have go it back in. real quick. That one minifigure on the left is standing on a non-Lego plate. How can you tell it's a non-Lego play? Oh, that one there. Good yeah. call. I think it's a... Uh... Not that any of those parts are Lego, but still. <laughs> <laughs> here is said orange layout, I believe here. This is what you're talking about, I assume, right? Yes. He okay. won a couple of award or two at Philly Breakfast, and he's well-deserved, this guy, and his family. It's a family operation. Um, Tim and Graham, and maybe there's a third name. I forget. But they do great stuff. Very, very cool. Um, this one I thought was dope. This is really, really cool. This guy basically created his own role-playing game setup. Um, the guy was bored as shit being there. Didn't want to talk to me about anything, so I just kind of figured it out. So this is where you drop your dice. Um, you drop them in the top. They go through the castle, and they end up down here, and that's your roll. And then you take that to this modular kind of labyrinth or dungeon, and you, so you go through different pieces, different things that you battle. So that these are this will be kind of your skeletons, your ogres, your orcs, that kind of thing, dragon, spider, that kind of thing. And then you go through different portions of it here, and all depending on how you roll. And then these are your kind of your hero, your hero characters and your cards. So this is the weapons that you have. This is kind of could be your health or different potions that you've collected and stuff like that. I thought it was a really, really cool idea. Um, but the kid just didn't feel like talking to anyone. So I didn't really get much detail. Yeah, that's um, with it being so well thought out and in depth and yet he didn't want yeah. to. Yeah. He was just bored as well, fuck. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand. Someone who builds this wouldn't also talk to humans. <laughs> But it was really well done. Uh, and there's your uh, your your movement stick or whatever it's called. Movement stick in the front. The thing in the front. That's how far you can move in a turn. Okay. Uh, it has a name, I'm sure. Movement stick is definitely not the name of it. Guys, whatever. Um, whatever, whatever, nerd. So a couple shout outs. Uh, Crazy arms right there on the uh, the archer. Um, uh, right yeah, there. Yep, right there. Let's shout out to Guy Himber there. And if you go back one, uh, crazy uh, extension cord knots in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the only real Blacktron that was that was shown there that I that I could see or that I remember seeing at least. So this is Blacktron and Blacktron two, uh, kind of showing there. So there you go, um, the moon base. This is I thought was funny. It's supposed to be a mosaic of Jesus. Doesn't look like any Jesus that I've seen. He is. Um, yeah, that's definitely uh, <laughs> a highway to the danger zone. Yeah, <laughs> is it a, that's in Kenny a- Loggins. Yeah, that was there last time. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Um, this is a uh, this is a very impressive um, build here too. So this is Endor, and this is kind of what I was talking about uh, earlier, Kenny. If you put everything on base plates, it, it kind of locks it into place. So if you want to do something like this, it'll look great, right? It looks amazing. But if you kind of are 
in for the modularity and the play value of your hot set. This, the, I don't know if this is necessarily the direction you want to go. So it all depends on how you feel like doing it. Right. Because you can certainly, if you put them, start putting them on base plates, you can do a lot of stuff with it. That's awesome. But it does kind of keep things locked into place where they are. Radical bricks. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all really cool. I mean, it has it has so much stuff. It has the trees, has uh, for for where the, the the biker scout chase was, and then it has the shuttle Tidarium. It has the the radar dish. It has the inside. Like it's it was all really cool. I'm not yeah. sure I can condone those trees, but then again, I don't know what the foliage on Endor is like. It's an alien world. <laughs> Here is uh, the Battle of Mustafar. Shout out to Pinkerton. Who loves the prequels? And shout out to having the high ground, as Obi Wan does. Which is a, which is a <laughs> shout out to that mouse droid. That is a great scene. <laughs> Why is that mouse droid there? Was it there before in the movie? I don't remember that being there. But Brink I've would seen, know because he loves Obi Wan. I've seen that movie once. That's enough. <laughs> Forever. This is a uh, an aquarium Ooh. scene. Which I thought was actually pretty cool. Pretty well done. I drew a blue duck because I've never seen a blue duck. And I, I, wanted I wanted to see, to see a blue a duck. duck. <laughs> it's an excellent blue duck. <laughs> and you passed the eighth grade, or uh, first grade. So here you go. I, I like this one a lot. Uh, inside a Pokeball. I thought this was a pretty cool idea and a pretty creative, <laughs> um, pretty creative one, um, which I would imagine is a uh, non-official building techniques or whatever. I think the, I imagine the clutch power on these is not. Oh no, it might be. That's pretty rad. Those, those are hinges. That's all yeah. legit. So this on, is fine. On the ring there. I thought initially it wasn't. I thought these are just. Uh, I'm the, trying to figure out what's holding together all those tiles in the back wall. Friction. <laughs> it's got to be. Nothing can really hold. You can't hold all that stuff in like that, right? It's got to be just placed in place. I would love to see if this had like another side to it, and it was. You don't. You don't want to see the other side. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that like you turn around and it's like. like what it's actually like inside a Pokeball, and it's like Pikachu all like cramped and like bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> bleeding. Yeah. I can't fit in this thing. <laughs> oh, quick. If you look all the way in the background, you'll see another one of those uh, large brick built figures. Probably the same this one uh, base model. Yeah, as the Stay Puffed. Yeah. And a shout out to uh, Pigment Surgery. Looks like uh, JD right there. You have like 30 30 vision or something? Like. <laughs> Literally everything. <laughs> Shout out to Han Solo and his blaster. Shout out to Tobias Beckett. And yeah, indeed. And this is a <laughs> the Grinch pop up book. I thought it was pretty cool, particularly with the pop up book Lego idea set coming out soon. I like this one. That was pretty cool. I, I mean, that one ain't popping up, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, shout out to Hooks and some wire. This was dope. This was really cool. All What's black. This is this is obviously a Vader. Uh, this is this is Vader, but. The texture is created Ooh. by the striated Grilled bricks. Grill yeah. bricks, yeah. And then the rest of it is all just regular black bricks, which I thought was really, really, really cool. And wow. Very, very well done yes. for this mosaic piece. Extremely really, well really done. cool. Because depending on, on, on the angle that you took it, like you could, you, you can, it looks, it's subtle. But then this was the best angle to actually capture it um, to see what they did. It was really cool. I've, uh, I've actually never seen that done. So good for them. Also, again, big fan of Rick and Morty. This is a this is about a, a five foot model of Rick and about a three and a half foot model of Morty. Uh, and this is his uh, his garage like workshop. Really, really cool. Um, everything is brick facing. I would imagine this is not obviously this is like a table underneath, but just has the the whole front the facade is all studs that they have, and these are all pieces from. From different different parts of it of, of the show. What is my what, what's, what's my the, uh, to spread butter? <laughs> like that's, what's the uh, the the lug? It's it's a uh, best group layout. Is there a lug or a group that's accredited for this one? I don't see one. Like um, individual name. It might just be yeah. some a few individuals. But yeah, really really cool. Oh, wrong way. Uh, shout out to another big ass mech suit. And shout out to Beer and Bolter's 40K. This is a 40K tank. <laughs> don't, know, don't know what it is, but it looks pretty awesome. Um, shout out to Stranger Things or Lego Things in this case. And again, we have the, the Grieveling with the, with the different textures here on 11. But what I particularly like as well is the attention to all the kids are brickheads 
all the more adults or the teenagers are kind of the, the different different kind of build style. They're not brickheads because they're not small. Come on. What's like the that. call? What's that build style called? You got this. I don't remember. <laughs> Miniland. Miniland? Like from, Miniland from like the Legoland, Miniland. Oh, displays. so there you go. I didn't know that. So Miniland. And then, of course, here's the, uh, the creature at the end. Um, that woman in red has her shirt on backwards. I did notice that. <laughs> Shout out to uh, the most non bionicle looking bionicles that I've seen. So I actually took a picture of those because I like the way this one looks. I think he looks pretty cool. But it looks, he's, he's more technic than bionicle, it seems. <laughs> he's more machine now than man. <laughs> what is that like drawer system behind them? Like, what's, what am I looking at? Does got, somebody uh, bring all their bricks? Or it's, oh. like a cub, it's like a cubby hole where you can like st- put you can put your purse there and then you can walk around this that, rock that's around. Coat check. <laughs> this I thought was actually very. I've never seen this built, but it's a trellis, which I thought was really cool. I Nothing that, that I would ever build. An, I thought that was called an arbor. Uh, well, the, I guess I could be. It could be an arbor, but the trellis is the structure itself to hold up the the plants and stuff like that. You fight me. We had one in the we had one in our house growing up. So, what? Uh, I, I don't know. If one is a more specific term. Like this could be, the, like the trellis is the, the general term, and maybe an arbor is this specific design. Uh, so you, you could be talking, right. I'm gonna look it up. Go for it. Um, shout out to big purple dinosaurs on this one here for a, a pig a purple dino mech. Um, you they, don't know what that is, do you? Nope. That is Berserk Fury from Zoids. I have the model kit of that thing. If you ever so seen the, the big lavender uh, raptor uh, model kit I have, that's that's it. It's a little bit fat in the face, but other than that, it's fantastic, and it has the accessories, and I'm sure all the vents open up. I like that it can't uh, support itself, so it has to be supported by this. <laughs> wow, that's a little trellis. Here you go. Um, this is uh, to go along with your TIE Fighter collection, Kenny, um, if you want a gigantic one. I like the uh, the cutaway shot on the one wing. Yeah, it's pre- it's pretty cool. I, I can't honestly imagine that that's what the inside looks like. Just tension cables. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they make that that whining noise when they fly by. Uh, this is a uh, downtown uh, Ninjago City or Ninjago Downtown. I think is what this one was called. I thought it was cool, and it would be kind of a a cool little addition to have with Ninjago City. Though it's not nearly as big. Okay, so a trellis is a. Uh... Is a um like a, a single side. An arbor is consists of trellises, and uh, I mean, actually, you know what? Trellis might already be plural, but uh, an arbor trellis. is is making a tunnel-like passageway out of trellis. Good call. Boom. Yeah. I guess I, I didn't. I didn't say that you were wrong. I said <laughs> one, is, one could be. I said one could be specific and one could be more general. So I think we're both right. Uh, here's their design of the Quake Mac. They didn't like the Lego version, so they decided to go with this one. <laughs> it's a cool set, regardless. Yeah, this one is is more brick built, I suppose. Great and picture, it, Paul. Oh, oh there we go. There you go. That's a video. video. This okay. is uh, again. This is more to the back to the seasons theme that they have they over let, here. They let you just touch on their mock. It actually says, "Please rotate slowly." So okay, that's, so that's, that's their mascot there. That little robot thing. That's the mascot for Brick World. Uh, right over there? Yeah. It's um it's basically if you took the mascot for Brickfest Live and you took R2 D2 and you made the, them both at the same time, hey, there's a new mascot. I saw <laughs> Tracer from Overwatch on that last one. <laughs> You'll probably see any of her weapons in this group. This is this the is, gamer lug group yeah. where there's, it's all just gaming weapons and of course Iron Giant, because everyone loves Iron Giant. Uh it's a uh, Nick Brick, uh, I think. Imagine, Imagine Regney might be in that group, and then it's a bunch of kids. I like the screen lightsaber there. The one yeah. on, on the... They, did, they did a good job with these, to be honest. I think this is Obi Wan here, right, and then Vader, and oh, then I see him on the right. I just see Luke, and so I'm like, damn, I'm done looking. <laughs> <laughs> and then barbed wire or razor wire. I thought that was actually just kind of cool. Oh, that's really well done. Yeah. I forget if that was there last year or not. Or, yeah, yeah, last year. Um, those are all the guns from the games that maybe Kenny can identify. And you know, if he can't, well, neither can I. Yeah. <laughs> I am not on those. Here you go. Nominated for best large building. Shout um, out to Harry 
Potter. Yeah. So, Kenny, <laughs> Kenny I, I think I sent you the picture last year of um, they had like a whole tracer setup where they had a of like a leather vest on a mannequin, and a mannequin her. torso, and it had like it was adorned with Lego to make it look like hers and then it had like the guns and all that and the and the, and the goggles around the neck yep yep, yep. that's those from there yeah that was the same lug i don't know if they had that here this time i didn't see it though maybe i just didn't catch the picture of it uh, like a like a brickhead version of of tracer on like a couple pictures well back. you saw that they might be doing lego overwatch as much as i don't believe that i don't believe that either i'll believe it when i see it i would love that but I'd probably get them too. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this is this is really cool. I'm digging the angles and the the vines. This yeah. is the a lost city of Fabuland. I think is what they call this one. Yep. <laughs> yes, because all the figures are Fabuland figures. Yeah, so a little bit of a callback and throwback there. So this was a pretty cool design. I liked it a so lot. Th that woman on the left. That's basically how I would be looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And here's our here's our brick loot, which is uh, <laughs> just, we're we're spotlighting brick loot only be, only because they're a Chicago based like brick subscription service, and I've, I emphasize brick and not Lego, because none of the things they had here for sale were actual Lego items. So they had tons of this stuff. They had base play packs and then little mini modulars and all that kind of stuff. Definitely not Lego because there's no okay, Lego. Okay, here starts. we go. I'm calling out Brickworld. I'm calling out Brian. And then don't, let, don't all... let these guys be vendors. This is this is the slipperiest of slopes. Yeah, these Thank are you. these are kind of mini modular type builds. But again, you can get all these on Ally Express. They've just branded them in their own boxes um, to kind of to kind of put this stuff out there. It's it's uh, again they're, they're I guess they specify that these are uh, they're again a brick subscription service and not Lego, but. It seems odd that they're a hundred percent not Lego for the stuff that they sell, and even they've got a bunch of light kits which I did not spotlight because again, even the light kits are on non-Lego sets. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I don't care if they're like a huge sponsor of the show. It's like have have the decency to not allow that kind of thing at the show. There's plenty of other people who'd be happy to vend and happy to sponsor. You, you don't need that there. Yeah, and again, but I think for all I know, they were selling like gangbusters. They were very popular because kids love mystery boxes, and they had that that little spinny wheel thing for, for the prizes. The best mystery of all is none of it's Lego. <laughs> Who does spinny wheels? The like jerks do spinny wheels, I guess. <laughs> hey man, I haven't done that spinny wheel in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, an awesome uh, Metroid and Samus. And here's a, yo, I heard you like Bionicle masks. Where here's a mech made entirely of Bionicle masks. I mean, those aren't the masks. Those are like. These aren't masks. No, that's like a shoulder <laughs> or a shin or something. It's it's an armor piece. Oh, the, so I heard, heard you like there's shoulders. One, there's one mask on it, like yeah. where the head is. Appropriately, and the rest of it's all. He's all shouldered up. Then it's it's like. Is the same piece over and over again, but it's not a mask. Uh, Sorry, Paul. I just thought I just thought it. I liked it in its ridiculousness. It's very. I, I think it would have been better if it was completely made out of masks, because <laughs> then the joke would have been great. <laughs> yeah, and, the pouch looks very much like that. By the way, and lug. The yeah. pouch is very similar. <laughs> Here's uh, just, again, uh, spotlighting a bunch of different ways to make trees. Or just a bunch of different trees, I should say, with similar uh, build uh, build types. But so, how different they can be. Just different colors and different, uh, different shapes make it look great. I forget if um, – actually, I don't know if Penlog did a collaborative layout with Texas Brick Railroad again. They uh, did they last did. year. Uh, the sign did have Texas Brick Railroad. Okay, so yeah. this is – Half Penlug and half Texas Brick Railroad, and they they do a pretty good job of like cutting it right down the middle, so it's it's not interwoven. It's like it just goes from one to the other, um, but you'll see a pretty big difference in like the track style and and the the landscaping style when it switches from one to the other. And very last picture I have, just to show they have other things, because you had mentioned on the last show that it, like the show went from I think Thursday through Sunday, open to the public Saturday and Sunday. So this is it's part of the other activities that you can do, I would imagine. Um, but they were they had a showing of Brick Madness, very much like they show the '86 movie at BotCon or at TFCon, 
I, I assume it's just like that. You know, just a way for the people that are spending the night at the hotel that are staying there and from out of town, they have something they can do at night. So I just thought what, it was kind of cool. What What is this? Brick Madness is like a, it's, it's a Lego convention themed movie i saw this is oh that yeah uh, yeah no, look up I, the trailer I, for it no i i thought as soon as i saw this i thought it was what i thought it what i think it is what it is but i wasn't sure and i just youtubed it and yeah um i yeah i remember that that's that's old yeah Unless i don't know if it's new. i don't know if it's supposed to be good or bad but they were actually there, there might be um i think it's just completed movie. yeah not available anywhere else, Chris. The, ori- the original is um, from years ago, but it looks like they just did a new one for that. Uh, Andrew Lee is actually in in <laughs> the uh, original portion of it, and that's it's years ago. But uh, check out Brick Madness. Um, it's it's a like a mockumentary. Yeah, about audio conventions. It's pretty cool. And that's um, that's it. You can find a young pictures. Andrew Lee in there. That's it for all my pictures. We've gone real long, and I feel bad that we have a guest on this episode. <laughs> We've run so long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, what are you going to do when you took all those pictures? Yeah, no, that's... I thought I was going to be able to just get through them quick, but you noticed, like, oh, there's there's, there's this specific figure, and then there's this is from this from this. Did, you, did and... you even see us take a two-and-a-half-minute trailer and spend an hour on it? Did you even <laughs> see that? What what's the ratio there? <laughs> a lot. But anyway, I think that this is as good a time as any to wrap up since we're probably pushing two hours now at this point. Um, before you put your screen, or as you put our contact screen up, Kenny, where can everybody find you? Um, if you want to say hi or anything, I really only do Instagram at Kenny Prime. One word. There you go. Find Kenny Prime on Instagram, and um. For everything else that we normally talk about at this point, um, you can find all of us on screen right now on Facebook, on Instagram as well. Um, all of our social media contacts are there. We are obviously um, being viewed on YouTube if you are watching us on the Bricks and the Dollar channel. Otherwise, you can listen to us on iTunes or Google Play. Definitely want to shout out all of our brothers and sisters in the realm of collectors. Check out the ROC Facebook page and Instagram accounts as well. Um, and check out RumbleCollectors.com as, as well. If you like building up to it and you want to check out some more nerd-related podcasts, check out the Cool Table Network, where you can find an entire family of nerdery podcasts, such as Enter the Realm, which just celebrated its three-year anniversary last, uh, no, this week, um, Brick in the Mold, Figure Banging, Stasis Lock, Nerd Rage Radio, Shattered Cast on Cuts, Plastic Fanatics, Toy Detox, Beer and Bolters 40K, Eight Weeks, and Fresh Communications. All these shows, while they may not be family-friendly, they're all part of a very friendly family. Let's get out of here.